On behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for being here on this morning and ready to praise God and his word and worship him as well. Amen. We thank God for those that are watching on YouTube, those that are on Facebook and Zoom. God bless you, and we pray that you will dig deep with us in the word of God on this morning. And we praise God in the name of Jesus for those that are uh, with, uh, on our webpage, Be Ye Holy Ministries, God bless you. And we pray that you follow along with us and feel free to, uh, to uh, be a part by uh, commenting, making comments if you want to. And uh, we want to be uh, uh, blessed in the word today. And we pray that you come along with us and interact with us in the word today. And God bless you all and we love you all. Amen. And praise the Lord, we're uh, in our Sunday school today and we're studying about faith, and it's called Faith Calls for Perseverance. And so we are delighted to have you all a part of the lesson. And we thank God for those that are here on this morning. God bless you. To the pastor, uh, Newsom, God bless you. And our, our mother, Mother Scott, our elder, Elder, Men elder uh, Edwards, and our mothers and deacons and friends, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Uh, we just thank God and we want you to go with us in the word of prayer. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, right now. We thank you, God, for this day, oh God, which we have not seen. Oh God, it's a new and a fresh day. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, today we pray, God, that we be refreshed in our faith, oh God, and that, oh God, we add more to our faith today through your word, oh God. Help our hearts to be open, O oh God, to those things that are said in your word. Let us not harden our hearts to, O oh God, what your uh, truth is, but help us, O oh God, to be open-hearted, humble-minded, humble O oh God, and willing and receiving unto what your word is saying to us today. And Lord, I pray that you bless the readers of the word, bless the hearers, O oh God, and bless the doers of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for uh, the lesson. Again, it's called Faith Calls for Perseverance. I am your teacher. Um, I am First Lady Annette Newsom, and uh, I'm here to um, study the Word of God with you on this morning. Praise God. And we thank God for our superintendent that is here. Again, Elder uh, Michael Edwards, God bless you. So on today, our Bible basis is coming from Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and the 19th through the 31st verses. Our Bible truth is Jesus' sacrificial death opens the way to the presence of God. And as you're standing, we're going to read along um, our scriptures and background scriptures and bless and name it as well. Our memory verse reads, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Hebrews, the 12th, the 10th chapter, and the 23rd verse. And class, our lesson aim is? By the end of the lesson, we will know Jesus' sacrificial death opens the way to the presence of God. Feel the importance of holding on to faith in Jesus and share our faith with others. In our background scriptures, Hebrews 10. Amen. And so our life needs for today's lesson to live confidently in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And our Bible learning reads to learn that God will judge us based on our relationship with his son. And what is the Bible application? To know that we can come before the living God with great confidence because God, because Jesus is the way. Our student responses is that students will worship God with 
confidence. And we're going to read our scripture reading. Lesson scripture is coming from Hebrews 10, 19 through 31. I will read the first verse and you will read the second. And we're going to continue to uh, read in that order. The 19th verse reads, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By, by a new, new and living, living way, way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that, that is to save his flesh. flesh. And having all an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And, and let us consider one another to broken to love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willingly, after, after that, that we have we received, received the knowledge, the knowledge of the truth, the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice, sacrifice for, for sin. sin. For a certain fearful looking, for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died, died without, without mercy, mercy unto two, two or three, three witnesses. witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose you shall he be thought worthy, who have trodden under the underfoot the Son of God, and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the reading of his word, and the word is blessed in Jesus' name. So as we are looking at our lesson today, we're talking about faith and how it calls for perseverance. So let us talk a little bit about faith. What is faith? What is faith? Deacon, uh, huh? Uh, faith. It's believing in something that you cannot not see, but believe that, that there is a, a God that watches over us. Uh, the Bible said that without faith, you cannot please God. So we must have faith in order to please God. And uh, we need faith because without faith, you know, uh, we cannot please the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Amen. Complete trust and confidence right. in God. Amen. Say that again. Complete trust and confidence in God. Complete trust and confidence in God. Deacon Hunt said it's the substance of things hoped for. Amen. So if we look at our lesson, you if you took the time out to look over the lesson and see where we were, where we're going in the month of September, we're going to be talking about faith. And uh, throughout this unit in September, it's going to be defining what is faith. And today we're beginning with how uh, faith is calling for perseverance. So throughout the lesson, throughout the unit, so mind you, we're going to be preparing ourselves to know a deeper, get a deeper understanding of our faith. And so today, today's lesson is going to deal with perseverance and um, the other lessons are dealing with um, what uh, faith is. And I know I wrote it down. Give me a minute. So we, we're going to be going through an uh, understanding of what faith is and how faith is assurance. And 
how faith is uh, endurance and faith inspires gratitude. So we're gonna prepare ourselves today for perseverance. Again, uh, as you look throughout the lessons, we're gonna talk about perseverance. And dealing with our faith, the next lesson is assurance. And then the next lesson is endurance. And the next lesson is how faith ex inspires gratitude. So today, uh, just a little bit about faith. I thought it great to think about faith, how that faith is a gift. Amen. And you may say, well, how did I know that it's a gift? We look at Ephesians, the second chapter, the eight through the ninth verses, it tells us how that faith is a gift. And um, it tells us in Ephesians that by grace, it say that we are saved through faith and that not of ourselves. So it is not something that we just decided to do to have faith. God gives us faith to believe. So this God-given faith calls for perseverance. This gift that we have, to me, since it's a gift, is precious. Our faith is precious. And so uh, it say that it is a gift, and it's not something that we have given ourselves and no one else has given it to us as a, a, a gift, but God has given it to us. And it say that uh, it is not a works lest any man should boast. So uh, we can't boast about this faith, like we got so much great faith, like we got this faith on our own. But we got to boast in God who giveth man faith, okay? And so faith is a gift. So anyone else having a thing to say on uh, the understanding that faith is a gift. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. From God. I'm sorry. Amen. Faith is truly a gift from God because we see, see, it's not of our own that we are associated with the, with the creator. Thus the word create. So we see just by God being the author, amen, be, I mean, be the beginning, I mean, of all of existence mm -hmm. for all things to include mankind that relationship we see is established. Uh, so we see here now is a, t a measure of faith. I say, man, I can see just by nature, we find out that each and every one of us, regardless of who, who you are, there is a measure of faith. Amen. amen. Now what you do with that, amen, that's a different story. Amen, because we all, to some degree, there's a consciousness that there is a God, amen. Amen. There's some consciousness, I mean, even when you, we were out, before we came to, <clears throat> to the Lord, amen, because before we gave ourselves to God, amen, and received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, you know, just by nature, man, no right from wrong, it was, it was something in, in us, amen, mm -hmm. that we felt like, man, just me is not enough, amen. So then I stepped out on faith, amen, yes. to trust, amen, and believe in something higher than myself, amen. amen. God. Praise amen. God for that. You know, a amen. Mm -hmm. and, you know, also, there's to pick it back on that Romans 1 and 17 said, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith, faith. to faith. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith, faith to faith. faith. So our f when we talk about this faith, uh, faith calls for perseverance and going back to what he said, God has dealt with every man a measure of faith. We understand as saints of God that our faith that we got saved the same faith that it took for us to get saved Amen. is the same faith it takes us to persevere. Yes. That faith grows from faith yes. to faith, you know. So what faith I had 40 years ago, I should my faith should be stronger today. If my faith is what it was 40 years ago, something is drastically wrong. And I have not, and, and evidently through all I've gone through, my trials and tribulation, God has not revealed anything to me from faith to faith all right. but what god has revealed to me through my walk with lord from the faith to faith is that he is just you know and that the just shall live by faith amen and that he would never leave us nor forsake us we talk amen. about faith calls for perseverance and there's some things that we as saints of god are going to have to persevere through amen and in perseverance thank god for what the pastor said we will live from faith to faith and so if we are having the faith, we, in, in order to persevere with this faith, 
we must know God. You can't have faith and not know God. And that's what it said in Hebrews 11 and 6. It said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we know that faith, is, it begins with God. And so we, and with us, we have to have that faith in God to persevere. If you cannot persevere without uh, having and believing in God and knowing God for yourself. So this faith that I'm talking about is a personal relationship with God that you confidently have in him. You have that confidence and you have experienced God for yourself. And therefore, you have received that faith in Jesus' son, and you know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is the son of God and is your savior. And so here in 2 Timothy 1 and 9, it says that who have saved us and called us with a, with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, and it say, um, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So we know that uh, without Christ, without his, his uh, um, crucifixion and him dying on the cross and, and God raising him up from the dead, we would not have this ability to have faith and even to have the faith to persevere. It all stems back to Jesus and what he did on the cross, okay? And so we know that faith is going to empower us to be able to persevere. Now let's deal with perseverance. What is perseverance? When I say if faith is going to empower us to persevere, so what is perseverance? Amen. Glory to God. And I think Pastor hit it. He said faith to faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we see that same faith. Amen. So we step out on faith. Amen. Yes. We stepped out to trust and have confidence in God. Amen. Uh, you know, outside of ourselves. Now, once we step out, amen, and now we are, you know, a part of the family. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Because now we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We believe in our heart that God raised him from yes. the dead. Amen. Yes. So we stepped out on faith. So yes. now after that, amain, there's a tutelage, there's a discipling that happens. Amen. There's a growth process. Mm -hmm. And as we go through that process, faith to faith, amen, at some point, I'll trust, amen, because God just continues to reveal himself because when we earnestly seek him, we begin to grow closer to God mm -hmm. and lesser in ourselves, amen. Yeah. So to persevere, amen, we find out first and foremost, I'm talking about beyond ourselves because it's a letting go of those things of the past, amen, yeah. and grasping and holding on to those things of God, amen. And likewise, uh, from in, uh, in, uh, in uh, opposition uh, from the world, we find out we have to persevere amen. to continue, amen, to do those things amen that God has revealed in us amen about him and what he's calling us to do amen I true like what you just said praise the Lord pastor yeah Jude comes to mind Jude 3 and amen. 4 you know beloved when I give all this to write unto you of this common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and mm -hmm. to exhort you that you should what earnestly contend yes. for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Yes. So when you look at perseverance, it is to continue forward and Amen. achieve the things that God has given us to achieve in spite of or despite the difficulty, despite the failures, the ups and downs in life, despite yes. the opposition that we're going to face. Perseverance, when we look at the, pre the perseverance, that means to continue to endure. Don't yes. give up, don't throw in the towel. And be not weary in well-doing. Amen. Praise God. So perseverance from hearing what everyone has said is being steadfast. You're unmovable in the faith of Christ. You're firm as a rock. You won't be moved. And uh, not only that, you're unpenetratable. Nothing can penetrate your faith because you're firm and you got a tight hold and you're hard as a rock. So um, that is what perseverance is. So our faith calls <coughs> perseverance. 
We can't, if you say you got faith, you're going to be able, you're going to have to be able to take something and not fall away. You're going to be able, you have to be able to stand, and when you've done all you can do, stand some more. And so that comes from perseverance. So we talked about how faith empowers us to persevere. And so in Hebrews, Hebrew warns us, it's for it warns us and gives us the reminded uh, and is reminding us in the scripture, you know, to not do certain things. And Hebrews the second chapter it said, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So we need to always be in the word of God meditating in the word, studying the scriptures, remembering them so that when we uh, are going through our daily uh, routine in Christ and when trials come our way and temptations come our way, we could be reminded in the word. Like the scripture said in Psalms 119, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So we have to be ready at all times is say also that how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? This, this uh, faith we have is great, precious, is a great salvation because no man can save us. We can't save ourselves. Mama can't save us. Daddy can't save us. So we got to persevere. We got to stand. We got to hold fast. That's what perseverance is, holding fast when the winds of life is blowing and the storms are coming in your life. Hold fast to that anchor, which is Jesus. Faith calls for perseverance. And it says, which at the first, this uh, great salvation was first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed. This, word, this salvation was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. And so we that have the faith in Jesus Christ, we got to hold on, saints. We got to hold on. You say, what are we holding on to? We're holding on to the word of Christ. We're holding on to the examples that he has set for us. We're holding on to the testimonies of the saints in the, of, of ancient times, those uh, the prophets, the things that they have prophesied to us, we're holding on to the promises of God. Praise God. So today I want to ask the question. Faith calls for perseverance. Why is this so important? Why is it so important to have faith in order to persevere? Well, first of all, the Bible said without faith, it is impossible to please God, okay? That's first and foremost. Then the Bible also let us know that whatsoever is not of faith is sin, you know? So it's a sin not to even have faith, you know? So when you ask the question, why is it so important to have faith? Going back to what I said earlier, the just shall live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You cannot please God without faith. Amen. Amen. Why is this subject important? Faith calls for perseverance. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, we see. Uh, we see where it is that you know um, we're called by faith. Amen. Now we say our faith. It, we say it is so important because what we're really talking about is being obedient and mm -hmm. continuing in the things in the word of God. Amen. Not the things in the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. God from the beginning and he continues to do it now as we learn. Amen. His people. Amen. His creation. Then he gave what? His word. Amen. Yes. And when he gave his word, it was incumbent upon them to be obedient and continue in the things that God had given them, amen, to do in his word. Amen. Likewise, it is very important for us today, amen, to continue in the word of God, amen, Lord of God, and not, amen. To do, not to do the things. So now 
where in the beginning, amen, God gave the word and they, tra and they transgressed against the word of God. Yeah. Now for all men to come after that, now we see now are born in sin. Now I say now that we've been redeemed and mm -hmm. we see, you say, uh, Romans 6 and 1, shall, you continue, shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid, amen, amen. because now that we've been redeemed, amen, and through Jesus Christ having that rightful relationship with God, amen, now that same mandate is there to be obedient to God's word. Amen. Praise God, and I thank God for that, because even it said, even he that knoweth to do good and do it not, to him it is sin. So if we perseverance, we got to do what we know is right. Amen. Anyone else have any comments? Can you so hear, me? hear me? Yes, sir. Thank, thank you this you morning. morning. Uh, <clears throat> I love the lesson and the comments that's been made so far. And like, like when you, you ask, ask first, first what is, what is faith, faith, you know, you know and as we're looking at Hebrew, from the biblical, biblical, those who believe, is that as, as the scriptures is given, given in the scriptures in God, God. But one, one can, can have, have faith, faith in anything, anything. as long as they have a belief. belief. But, but here, here in, in this, this context, context, I love it. it. And, and I like the way you, 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 this thing is going. For the children of God, those who believe, where is one's faith? It should be in God. I like, I like the scripture, the scripture you use well, when you say, I was, I was trying to write it down, down, which, which was, was there, which he which had purposes purpose to, to save us, salvation, salvation from the from beginning. The beginning. Amen. But then, but then what, what caused us so quick, quick to, 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 to stray, stray from, from that? that? I like I what like pastor, pastor said. You, you asked ask that, that question, question persevere. Uh, if one sin, how can they say they have faith? Uh, or, or sinning, sinning or, or believing, believing that what that God, God has, has said. said. And, and I think I that's think come, come with maturity as we, we study the word, the word, come together and seek and, and put it all together. together. It's, it's not, not in ourselves. ourselves. You talk about it's, it's a, a gift. gift. What, what gift? gift? Salvation. Salvation. Sometimes, Sometimes things can come in our lives that and shake us and call us to move in all kind of directions. And I think he's, to me, he's talking to the Hebrew about that. This faith, this, faith, this, this time, time has come. come. You should, you should have, have in God, God trusting God, God regardless as the pastor alluded to your situation, situation circumstance, or whatever. whatever. If you're if his, his, he done saved you, and salvation has come, come, and you done embrace it. it. How can you be so quick to forsake it? I think the scripture's going to get in there and forsake the sima of the brothers and sisters and stuff together. How can you be so quick to go back, abandon it? Amen. So, so I know, I know we apply to, to uh, uh, the, promises the promises of God, God and, and, and the things sometimes, but what is the faith he's talking about here in this chapter here, here and, and as you outline, outline these scriptures, scriptures here? here. Amen. As you said, faith, faith in God. God. Are they, are they not, not God's, God's people, people? He called them? them? Are we are not we believers? believers? Are we are so we quick to abandon our faith? Amen. In the Creator? Amen. Glory Amen. to God. God. And, I, and I think that's wonderful. And, and, uh, and as, as you know, um, I was hearing the comments. I was thinking about then. And I was thinking about because we've been using the word maturity. And we know that we see now the initial um, church, the initial Christians at that time. We see, well, it was it about the maturity. Or what was the argument here? Mm -hmm. We see there was something. There was some practices and things that were happening. Amen prior to this point, glory to God, mm -hmm. when we look at sacrifices, amen, yes. when we look at sin, amen. glory to God, amen. Mm -hmm. So we see here, I mean, for one, they were dealing with, deal, dealing with that as well, but then they have persecution. Amen. So now from a cultural standpoint, now we're talking about God's people, mm -hmm. so truly they knew God, amen, and they were given God's word. But see, now outside of the law, amen, mm -hmm. now we see Jesus Christ, and I wrote down, I was looking there and say, you know, there's no more offer for sin. And um, I think uh, 10 and 18, really, uh, as going into this lesson, mm -hmm. highlight that. See, no, nowhere uh, remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Amen. amen. So now we see that perpetual offering yes. through Jesus Christ. Amen. So now, and then on top of that, we see that the people are being persecuted. Mm -hmm. We can draw a direct correlation from that today and, and yes. likeness and, and, and learn from it as well. Amen. So regardless to how long you've been in the faith, amen, whether it's been one day or a thousand days, mm -hmm. glory to God. 
Hey, the standard still remains the same. If you know know better, you should do better. Amen. If you're conscious, amen, that which they have been given, yeah. regardless of whatever measure that is, amen, we're mm. called to be obedient to the word and stay steadfast in the things of God, amen. Even if it's opposition, mm. as then, where we see that, you know, I mean, some folks are being put to death, amen. It's, just, it's a number of things, amen, yes. we find out. Um, when we continue to read on in the scripture um, that were happening to the, uh, the Christians at that time. Um, or likewise, if it dwells, if it resides in us. I'm talking about our own. It ain't got nothing to do with outside influences. So I believe they were dealing with a couple things. Um, mm-hmm. Culture, because we're, we're habitual. Yes. And sometimes we, say we, um, we adopt certain things, and those things are hard to let go sometimes. Mm-hmm. You get used to, you know, you hear people say, that's how we always did it. Yes. It, see, and I can, you know, so Amen. I'm just using that as an analogy to say that maybe some of them might have had that mindset. No, this is how we always did it. Amen. And now we're doing this new thing. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, now we're believing in this new way. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. Amen. Same God. I'm not yep. saying a different God. Same but God. now we see a new way where it is they couldn't just approach. Yes. Amen. Now we find out that all where it is, it wasn't just a select few. Mm-hmm. I won't get into your lesson to preach and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. But we, now we see that all could what? Have access to God. Right. Amen. Amen. A lot of doubt to everybody. So now we see that's a distinct difference. Amen. And that's a, you know, we're reading now, but can we see how for all those years they had been practicing this one way? Mm-hmm. Amen. And now all of a sudden, amen, now there's new way and it wasn't accepted. Amen. By yes. the masses. That's why they were being persecuted. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. And now we see this encouragement. Amen. Mm-hmm. To hold fast Yes. To the word of God, regardless yes. of how much, regardless of how long you've been in the faith, regardless mm-hmm. of how much you know, that Amen. what you are conscious of, the measure that you have, hey, hold on to that. Hold on to it. Pers- persevere. Because yes. I asked the question when I looked at the lesson title, why did they need to persevere? Why, why, what, what, what were they coming exactly. against? Amen. Yes. I said, what was the opposition? Glory mm-hmm. to God. And, then be, and, I, and I just got, it got excited. And I said, okay, I can see how they had an opposition then. And likewise, see how we are opposed now Amen. within ourselves, that old man, and yeah. likewise the culture. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Thank God for, for that, uh, Elder Edwards. Uh, you really brought us on point here. Um, because when we look at, let's look at Hebrews 11, the first chapter, when we talk about, because uh, you mentioned, you know, uh, this new and way, living way versus the old way. So uh, we know, uh, first of all, we did say that faith came from God, and we saw that in uh, Hebrews 11 and um, the third verse. You know, we see that God was on already working this faith thing, you know. Um, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So God spoke the word, and it was. So, and, and then we, going back to the old way that they did things when it came to approaching God um, we're going to go to the 10th chapter of Hebrews but first let's look at um, Hebrews uh, we're go to the 10th chapter and I would like for Mr. Edward could you read starting with the 10th verse Amen glory to God Hebrews the 10th chapter and the 10th verse by the which will we are sanctif- we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. Amen. And but the 12th and 13th. Okay. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins mm-hmm. forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Amen. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Read the 14th. For by one offering, he hath perfected for every man that are sanctified. Amen. Notice it said, for one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. And so, um, and remember, it say that in every priest and the daily ministering the offering, Oftentimes, the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. And then the, there's another scripture I want to deal with. This was the old way where, um, let me use the scriptures first. It say in the um, 10th chapter and the first verse. You have that, uh, uh, read the 
10, Hebrews 10, 1, and go to the fourth verse. I mean, fifth verse. Hebrews 10 and 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very uh, image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Mm -hmm. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Amen. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Amen. So notice, we're getting the history of how they did things, the rituals that they went through to get to God, to get in his presence. And we know that the priest was the one to go before God for the people. And so and he would make an offering and sacrifice up for the bull, use the uh, animals, goats, or whatever the uh, offering required. He would go before God and make a sacrifice for the people. And so it said, there's no more of that. But it's, it's Christ's blood that makes the difference now. And it say, uh, we go to the ninth chapter of Hebrews in the 27th uh, verse, it say, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment, okay. The 28 verse is what I'm looking at. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And the, also in the ninth chapter of Hebrews, it's saying the 13th verse, for if the blood, well, let me start with the 12th. We'll go up to the 11th. It's a Hebrews 9 and 11. Do you have that, Elder? Read that for me. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. In the 13th verse. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who Amen. through the eternal spirit offered himself without, a, without spot to God, purge your conscience from, from the dead, works to serve the living God. Amen. Now, while you're standing, can you explain that? To bring us uh, to the point of the old so that we could talk about the new. So to give an give understanding, we're talking about how they did things in the, in the Old Testament, how they offered up for their sins. Okay, so Elder is going to explain those scriptures and bring us to the point of, so we can get to the new. Amen. Glory to God. So we can see Christ at this point. Now, now we can see here a contrast between the law, amen, and then we see grace, amen. We can see a contrast, but in it, we have to be careful when we start talking about Jesus because we know he was there in the beginning. And now mm -hmm. we see the manifestation. We see the man, Jesus. We see now this sacrifice where it is for the atonement of sin for the people of God that mm -hmm. were chosen by God, amen, that were no different than any other, but God chose them as his people right. and gave them his word. He loved them. And we seen Amen. earlier, we may have had a comment last week where we said, we see where God would distance himself from his people sometime, but mm -hmm. guess what? He didn't abandon them. Amen. amen. So now we see here in the state that they found themselves, amen, where the priests, amen, and, and we see uh, from uh, uh, God would give his word to the prophets. Mm -hmm. Now we see through Jesus Christ, instead of just being what? Uh, going in once a year, and mm -hmm. they go out, and then That's they got right. to come back next year, and they do the same. And even yep. the priests, amen. the priests had sin, amen, because they, they used, I think if I remember the reading, they had to tie a rope, you know, on, mm -hmm. on them because, they, you know, because they might not come out, glory That's to God. Right. But we see here now, one was able to go in, mm -hmm. amen, and now you don't have a select few, right. i.e. the priests, amen, that was going and going to the holies of holies, amen. They would come in and do this every year. We have Jesus Christ That's now, right. and now it's unto all. Thank I love you. it. Say, for God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son, the world, amen. So yes. it wasn't now we see that the extension to all mankind, the invitation, amen, 
to approach God, amen, through Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know what I'm saying? So it's not just the Jews now, amen. Mm -hmm. It's not just that select group yes. of people. Now, yes. everyone has the opportunity through Jesus Christ to be one of his. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So beautifully explained. Anyone else have a comment on the old, the uh, way they did in the Old Testament? Uh, yes. yes. <coughs> I like, I like that, and I that think you're going somewhere with it. With it. Uh, uh, although the price has come, come, grace has come, come, that gift, gift which was there in the beginning, beginning of time, mm -hmm. and, and there's, there's something that's happened, happened uh, uh, Elder, that was, was mentioned, mentioned early, early, and I know we won't have time to get into it. What caused them to begin to put this doubt in their mind to stir them up? And if we ain't careful, that, that same, same system, system that was, that in, was place in place then exists today. today. Sometimes Sometime we've gone, we've gone according to old ways instead of the new ways, which you're going to get, gonna get, gonna get into, into, which is talking about Christ. Christ. It didn't, it didn't say, say we still, still need, need certain, certain people, people to do certain things, but we don't have to do certain things that Christ has already fulfilled. I like where you went back to that first verse. It was a shadow pointing to Christ. Now, Christ is the fulfillment of that. But there, there are those, those who still must, must have practice old ways. ways. And, I, and think I, think I think that's going to get in that verse that you're going to get 24. Instead of we call to encourage each other, that's always been my ministry when God called me to build up and exalt the body, body not, not causing cause division, division or whatever. What, what caused these, these division among the body? body. That's, that's the issue then. And I think it's an application for us today. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. And so... Uh, like you were saying, we're talking about the old, and when we look at Hebrews, I'm gonna bring uh, where it begins. Um, we did know that God made a covenant, and in the eighth chapter of Hebrews, it say that in the seventh verse, it say, "For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, say the Lord, then I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, say the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws, we come into the new, into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And, and then uh, here it say, in that he said in the 13th verse, a new covenant he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. And so we understand now that Paul, here the writer is trying to get them to understand we're under a new covenant now. We're, our focus now is Jesus Christ, you know, and what he has done on the cross for us. And so we're to persevere. So the saints were persecuted during those days because they were uh, walking in the new and the living way. So now let us talk about the new and the living way in the verse 20. It say, by a new, it say, having therefore boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, because Elder, um, Edward was telling us how that not everybody could go into, uh, go into the holiest of holy. The priest had to go in there. And, and, and so here it say in the 19th verse, we have boldness now to enter into. It say the Holy of Holy into by the blood of Jesus Christ. And it say by a new and a living way, which he have consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. So someone explain that to me. The veil and the, and the new and living way. Well, well, it's back, back, new first. It's back it's to what back you said, you, you, you're doing, doing an excellent, excellent job, job is, is he, he is, is the, the alternate, alternate sacrifice. sacrifice. They don't need the offer. 
every year sacrificial for the sin because that would be a, a continuous thing. Amen. He had done away with that. And who was the going off of these sins? It was the priests that do that on the behalf of people. He is the alternate sacrifice, which takes me right back to the comment that Elder Edwards made. There's the issue. Yes. That, that Christ has come, has come but, then but then you got, you got these, these leaders, leaders who, and, and who have uh, had a had position, position in the, in the will, will of God and his purpose, purpose is continuing to practice some old ways. ways. You, Amen. You're Amen. Hitting Amen. It. You're Amen. hitting it. You're hitting it. But he's, but he's trying, trying to convey to here to them, them here's, here's a new covenant. He, yes. he, he didn't he say the old covenant was valid. The old covenant was pointing to him, was a shadow. Now he's the fulfillment of it. Sometimes when, 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 when people, people get, get illuminated, enlightened, and, and, and new way or the word of God, and sometimes uh, they, struggle they struggle with it sometimes, sometime, especially, those especially those who've been walking a long time, time come and come snatch, and snatch that, that out of them. them. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And as you talk about, amen, the veil, amen, and we I went back to the 19th verse, having therefore, brethren, um, brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, yes. amen. See, that boldness comes from Jesus, amen. We see here the most high, the holy place. That was a part of the sanctuary uh, which symbolized the presence of God. Now, we see and that portion of the sanctuary which symbolized the presence of God. That's the contrast. We see here now there was, that, that, that wasn't accessible by everyone, yes. amen. But we see now, see, is a, is a, is a, that's through Jesus Christ, and everyone who receives Jesus Christ has that same access. Glory to God. Amen. He, yep. Amen. Thank God for that. So now we thank God for this new and living way. That's what it's called, the new and living way. So that's why we say Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way. It's the new and living way. How many of you are happy about this new and living way? We don't have to go How out and buy a bull or a goat to offer for our sins. And then, you know, the, the priest then, some, some of them died, then another one had to come in. But Jesus only died once, and he's the eternal son, you know, and he's, he has done the work and is done once and for all. Amen. I, I want to say, we know that Jesus told the disciples that he was the way. Amen. 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 I wrote down Hebrews 5 and 9 and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Amen. And then specifically in reference to what we're talking about now, Hebrews 9 and 8. Mm -hmm. Say the Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not made yet manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. So um, we, since we understand this new and living way is accepting Christ into our life and having a personal relationship with him and uh, believing God that he raised his son up from the dead, now that we have, so now it has allowed us to become the children of the living God. So if you look at um, 1 Peter 2, it tells us how we are a holy nation, a holy a priesthood, you know, um, and so forth and so forth letting us know how God adopted us into his family. So it brings us into the presence of God because of the blood that Jesus shed for us. This is the new and living way, and I'm so glad about it. So faith calls for perseverance. To me, just knowing Christ and knowing that what he has done for me and knowing what he can do is enough to make me want to persevere even the more. It motivates me. So when you have perseverance, you got motivation. So I say to my sisters and brothers, don't lose your motivation. You lose your motivation, it's hard to persevere. Because when you got Jesus on your side, you can say, as the scripture said, I could do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So hold fast, like it said in the 23rd verse, it tells us that after we have been cleansed from our sins in the 22nd chapter, after we have drawn near to him with a true heart and have full assurance of faith and our hearts are sprinkled and clean from an evil conscience and our bodies were baptized with water, it says, let us hold fast 
the profession of our faith without wavering. Don't let us be like the drunk man that can't stand, just wavering, falling everywhere. Don't have a, a focus of anything. He's not conscious of where he's going. But we got to have a full assurance of faith and not waver when the storms come, when people are talking about you. So here, the, the saints here in the, in the scripture, they had people that didn't like what they were doing. And sometimes we, we fall apart when people talk about what we're doing because not everybody with what we're doing. But we got to stand in these days. We got to stand in this living way. We got to have faith to stand. That's what the script, that's what the lesson is telling us. We got to have full assurance. Know that you know that you know that Jesus is your Lord. He's your Savior. He will keep you. Every promise that he gave us, we got to believe that he will do it for us. So it says to hold fast to the profession of your faith. Anyone that's having the comments on holding fast your profession. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, uh, early on, Pastor, said, that same faith, amen, that you grabbed hold to, you know what I'm saying, when you chose God, amen, to be your Lord and Savior, that same faith, amen, with that same God, amen, yes. will keep you. I think we just have to be reminded, amen, we're talking about perseverance. Yes. Continuing in the things of God, amen. When you came, amen, and you knew nothing, and o over time we, uh, we start adopting this thing, that thing, mm -hmm. this person, that person, this practice, that practice. We just have to be reassured, for one, to stay steadfast in God. Yes. And remember, why is it that I come in fellowship, amen, we'll get to a similar why do we come and assemble with one another? Amen. Yes. And, and be steadfast in those things, you know, and don't forget and don't get so distracted yes. with other things. Why is it that I sing? Mm -hmm. Why is it that I do the things that I do? Amen. I'm always reminding myself. Yes. Why is it that I do this? I mean, for the glory of God. And for glory Not of God. myself. Yes. Not of the culture. No, when I love you, I'm loving. Oh, I'm bring, giving God glory. Not because, because of God, amen. Because of God's love for you. Because the only thing good that you can see in me, we'll find out, is the image, image of God. Because I'm yielding in myself amen. and doing that which God called me yes. to do. Sometimes we'll start ever so slightly changing the narrative. We'll start ever so slightly changing the reason. And yes. justify it, amen. And now I've added another one. I always talk about the lawyers, amen. But then we get the psychologists mm -hmm. that come in the church want to play the mind games, amen. 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 I don't need the psychological babble, yes. and I don't need the lawyer speak either. Amen. What I need is the word of God and stay rooted in that. Amen. That's the enough. Word. Glory yes. to God. So when I see him talking about um, staying steadfast, amen, yes. and perseverance, let's keep it simple. What is it? Why? What did God call us to do? Amen. Do that. Amen. That's enough for God, amen. And it should be enough for me and anyone else that is in God, amen, and not in ourselves. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I thank God for, like for that. Anyone else? I like, I like to like comment the off that. that. I, like I like you as, as you're doing this. Y'all got, got me happy, happy down here. here. I'm on vacation. I'm still happy with y'all. Oh, oh, Lord. Lord thanks. Um, um, that, that verse, which you're getting in 24. Let's see. For those of us who are strong, like, like you said, holding fast, fast and confident, I think. Uh, and, and we, we see, see that, that today in today's society. society. I want to apply application. We see there are those, no matter, no matter what happens, happen, they're not going to waver, waver in their faith. faith. As, 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 as elders, elders talk, talk about, about, doesn't, doesn't matter, matter the psychiatrist, psychiatrist whoever, whoever comes, comes they're going to stand fast. fast. But, but I want to challenge something here. It's not just for us. Because if you look at this context and we get in that next verse, how do we encourage elders? Who mm -hmm. in this body? Who been called? Do we, Do we encourage, encourage them, them to be strong, strong in the Lord, Lord continue in the Lord, or we discourage them? them. And, that's and that's where I think, if you look, if you look at, the at the fullness of this lesson, lesson when you get, get to that to next verse, think 26 and whatever, whatever that's, that's the problem. problem. Are we, are we exalting them? The Lord dealt with me in my ministry. He says, your ministry is to build them up. I know what the issues are, but build them up in me. Amen. Exalt Amen. them. They're, they're still a child of God. They're still my children. Yes. Now, they they don't, don't deal with the issue, issue but first build, build them up in their faith. faith. Yes. Have I not called them? Have they not embraced me? I like something the elder said about the disciples early. 
The disciples didn't understand everything. But who called them? But oh Lord, when the Holy Ghost came, when the Spirit came, after Jesus had ascended, what did they say then? They remember all those things which he taught them. Was they not sold out then? Did they not go and, and, and promote their brothers? That which he spoke and taught. For some of us, when we come to know this thing, man, y'all got me excited. I'm getting my dance on now. Y'all excuse me. But when we come to know this thing, it's not just for us. Amen. If I'm on the mountain by myself, I want every brother, every believer to be on that mountain with me. We're children of God. Praise God. So we have one more comment. Amen. I was thinking, what discouraged them then? Mm -hmm. Can we do a contrast to what, who, and what actions discouraged the people then? And can we see um, similar um, things now in, in, our, in the application, in the context of, uh, you know, uh, being believers now, Christians now, saints now? Can we see a contrast? Can we see a likeness, a similarity? Well, we see then, hey, man, they were discouraged because you had folks, man, they, look, we've been doing this this way a long time. Mm -hmm. now, now, see, now, there's one, now not, there's one thing, discipline is one thing, but we're, what we're talking about is the word of God, amen. Mm -hmm. This was already spoke in the word of God, amen, in multiple locations, amen, that God was going to put the word in their heart, amen. We understand that the law wasn't the end. We understand that Jesus was to fulfill that, man. You got God on the scene. Amen. Sometimes God can be right there on the scene and he's like, no, nah, we're going to continue to do, and, and you know, because it, we, we cannot become self-righteous is what I'm really saying, amen. Amen. We have to be mindful, amen. We, uh, we, we can't become righteous in ourselves, mm -hmm. amen, and in the things that we do. Yeah. Um, we're only righteous and if we remember that. That's why I'm always hollering God, God, and God. Because mm -hmm. whatever I'm saying or whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to find God in it. Amen. Amen. I hear you. I'm trying to find God Amen. in what we're talking about. Yes. Amen. Because otherwise I'm asking, what are we talking about? Yes. Because uh, we, we come to promote God. God. Amen. Yes. I mean, like, I want to be kept in God. I want to live in God. God. Amen. So I'm trying mm. to figure out what we're talking about. Amen. 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 So he say, so we see here what discouraged them then. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then do those and do and do we find ourselves doing the same thing now, or do we see the same thing now in the culture, where the culture is trying to pull you away from God and have you to adopt their way of doing Amen. things. Amen. That's a very good pull you point. away from the Word of God. Amen. And discourage you. And and then are you still struggling? Am I still struggling with, you know, the old things I used to do, amen, amen. versus doing what God's calling me to do right now? Amen. amen. God's a right now God. He wasn't just God then. Mm -hmm. He was God then and he's God now. Amen. Praise the Lord. I like what he said. So to bring the lesson to the class, what are, we, what are you persevering today? And your, it's a faith house for perseverance. Elder uh, Edward said, you know, sometimes the old man wants to come up and want to, you know, and, and we got to persevere against it and, you know, and, and do something to, so we won't turn away. And so what are some things we have to persevere today? Uh, talk uh, about uh, today? What are some of those things? Teacher, teacher if you don't I mind, give me 30, 30 seconds before, before you go there. I'd like to address something that it was mm -hmm. asked at what called it and the and pastor, pastor hit something, something. And, it was, and it was and it, and it, it got, got in my spirit, spirit. He, was he was on it, on it. <laughs> he, he talked, talked about, about first righteousness, righteousness. and then he, he talked, talked about, about sin. sin if you got if you sin got you got, got no faith, faith. Mm -hmm. but then how we look at that word sin how we look at the word faith faith in who what god did and but but elder uh Edwards asked the question what caused it and which goes back to something the pastor said I pulled up Acts, uh, uh, I can't even see my see scriptures, my scriptures now. now. Acts 2 and 42, they talk, talk about fellowship of believers. believers. They, were they were devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching of the fellowship and the breaking of bread, bread after the, the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost. Come. which goes right back to the pastor's comment. Pastor was on it. If I'm fellowshipping with my believers and, 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 and we all want to court and the Spirit of Barcelona want to court, how can I sin? What caused me to sin? What caused me to lose my faith? You see yes. the green, the green tag up in the corner. Okay. okay. Got that. Yeah. So when we fall away from fellowshipping with one another, you know, 
this, the word of God tells us to, that we love each other. When we love God, we will have fellowship with one another. So when we forsake the assembling of ourselves together, we uh, put ourselves in a way where we could be tempted, you know, with things to pull us away. You know, we gain strength from fellowship. And so um, mm -hmm. that's why we have to stick together because together we are stronger. And so, um, and together we can encourage one another. And so if we stay apart, we'll divide it. We'll, if when we separate ourselves from one another, we allow uh, the enemy to speak to our minds and uh, we can allow uh, false teachers to persuade us in things that is not true. So that's why we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It is a strength for us. It, is, is something that God commanded us to do. Is to, uh, if we love one another, if we love God, we're gonna have fellowship with one another. And so, uh, is that uh, anyone else have anything? Amen, and I think it's important as we talk about fellowship with one another, we, we uh, re be reminded of why we come to fellowship with one another. Yes. Because even in that, we talk about the things that discourage Mm -hmm. Amen. A lot of time we're, we're always seeking some kind of way to reach somebody, amen, and their emotions and their feelings and things of that nature, amen. Mm -hmm. But we find out that we see here now this perpetual, I mean, this, uh, uh, this uh, contonement for our sins, amen. This was something that was spiritual beyond mm -hmm. the way they feel, beyond the practices and the things that they have done that they're still holding on to and grasping, mm -hmm. um, grasping to. And I see that, you know, we just have to be reminded in our fellowship, why do we come together to fellowship? And I wrote, I, I, I typed in, I said, you know, in fellowship, and I said there's a few things that uh, we exhibit and we should exhibit, and uh, we faith, which, which is our assurance. I come to talk and, and, and be what moved in my faith for mm -hmm. God, amen. Not, not, not in my car, not in my possessions, not in our practices, those things that go outside of God, hope. I say we see here promises, the, the, I'm talking about the incentive for being obedient. Right. So I want to talk about what is it for me to be obedient to God right. amen, when I come in fellowship, amen, and talk about those things. A lot of times if we, if we get distracted, amen, on why we come to fellowship, amen. see that discipleship as we talk about teaching, preach the word of God, win souls over and disciple mm -hmm. our, our mission, amen. We see that you now those are that being obedient. If I give you the word, amen, and it's illuminated in you and you become conscious, now you can make a conscious decision yourself whether or not you want to draw closer to God. I can't make you do, but if I never get to that point, yes. if I never get to the crust of it, you never become, you know, more conscious in your mind about who God is, now you're never really making a conscious decision. You're making an ignorant decision. Mm -hmm. One ignorant means not knowing. So if, if I give you nothing else, it's the word. The heaven and earth shall, but the word Amen. will be here forever. Long after I'm gone, I want to leave you with the word. Amen. It's going to stand. Because I'm going to leave. You're going to leave. Mm -hmm. We all going to leave. But if I leave you with the word, amen. See, that'll keep you. Amen. Now amen. you can continue to make a conscious decision and continue to pass it on. That's why it's the word's important. That's right. Amen. When we come together in fellowship, because when we use the word fellowship, a lot of all kind of other things come to pop in your mind. Uh -huh. Right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And these are things of the old man. Amen. And you get real excited. And I'm not saying it's sinful. Everything that we, I understand, I, I get it 100%. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, he, he, here you go again. Okay, yes, here I go it's again. It's the truth. It's the truth, though. Because just the first thing come to your mind. We talking about fellowship. Do the word come to your mind? Or do we having a barbecue come to your mind? I know that's right. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Let's keep it real. Amen. Let's bring it home. Yes. What comes to your mind? That's an indicator right there. Amen. The signs are there. You just ain't reading them. Mm -hmm. And ever so slightly, we'll find ourselves veering off because our mindset, we start changing mm -hmm. and, and moving away from the word. Amen. I want to sing, sing myself happy and all these other things. Mm -hmm. But the word. It's the word. Does that come to mind? Evangelism, put, you know, getting the word out to others. Does that mm -hmm. come to mind? Why do we come together to assemble? Yes. Draw strength from one another. Amen. We take, the take it and misuse it. Why do I come every week? Why do I read every That's day? Because right. I want to get closer, closer to God. Closer to the Lord. Stop trying to drag me off somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I want to get closer to Amen. God. Amen. 
Amen. I the pastor called the other God. morning. He said, hey, said, you still like, hey, I'm still in love with Jesus. I woke up in love with him. <laughs> I was dreaming about him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank Amen. God. Amen. That's beautiful because, yes, when we forsake not the assembly, it's so we could come together, study the scriptures of God, get in the word, praise God, Amen. worship God together. Yes. That's where the strength comes from. Amen. And and when we come together, we're coming to, uh, to ask for the Spirit of God to come in our presence. Because we know he promised us. He said, where two or three are gathered in, together in his name, there he is in the midst of us. So we wanted to come together mm -hmm. so God could come in the midst of us. Amen. And so God can heal us. Yes. God can deliver us. And God can set us free. Yes, I was enjoying what Minister um, Elder. I got to use you to Amen. Say that. Beautiful. What Elder said what, was saying, and you're absolutely right. We got to come together, and when we are amongst each other, we need to make sure that we are seeing God in one another. And in order for yes. us to be able to do that uh -huh. ourselves, we got to do is work on ourselves. That's how right. we do that? We got to by you asking the question about how do we per persevere? Yes. Guess what? We got to time. Yes, yeah, we got to engage ourselves in reading the scriptures. Yes. Not only do we need to read the scriptures, we can't just read those scriptures, mm -hmm. but we got to be able to meditate in those scriptures. Yes. Not only that, but we need to apply those scriptures yes. to our daily walk in Christ. Amen. Because it says in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, it says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Yes. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Yes. And the 17th verse says that the man of God may be perfect, truly, truly furnishing unto all good works. Amen. So we have to show one another our good works. Yes. And we can't do that unless we are applying, meditating, and we are reading the word of God so mm -hmm. that we can see that in one another. Yes. And everything like that. Not saying that we don't show fellowship and have a barbecue every once in a while. But once we're doing, while we're doing that, guess what? Amen. We need to still talk about the word of God yes. because his word is always available. Amen. I, I, I like this is wonderful. What we'll see here is, mm -hmm. see, just like the contonement for sins then was mm -hmm. temporary, See, the barbecue is temporary. Yes. I'm trying to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm saying, you know, why you keep doing yes. it over and over and over again. But see, uh -huh. the word is everlasting, amen, when yes. you get it in your heart inwards. So I'm going to do this is a direct correlation. Amen. Where it is, amen, all these other things that we want to do, see, it's temporary. Then you mm -hmm. got to do another one, and you do another. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just tired and broke, busted, and disgusted from doing so many of them, right? And say, like, but you're not getting, but see, the word, amen, don't cost yes. you nothing. Amen, amen. does it? It's a mm -hmm. gift, amen. God already put it on the inwards of your heart. Don't Hey, look, no effort at all, amen. He's already get, just giving you, giving you the word, glory to God. And see, that will last forever. All amen. the other stuff is temporary. Yes. Amen. It's temporary. But, yes, because the barbecue, not just the, just the barbecue, just fellowship itself. It's just like when mm -hmm. little Rick was a little boy and I used to take him to the park. Mm -hmm. And when I sit there, it's just an, in other words, little th other things is just an avenue of, for me, right. is to get God's word in there. All because right. somebody will yes. sit down there at the bench with me and they'll start talking. Don't even be talking to me. Uh -huh. But my ear will catch what they're saying and they'll start talking about God. I slide on over to the side. I was like, oh, for real? I know what you're talking <laughs> yes. about, girl. I interrupt that conversation mm -hmm. and go on, follow, and we'll start talking to them. And the conversation keep going and keep yes. going and keep going. So that's just a way of just letting God putting God out there. You Amen. should use every means necessary yes. to let God people, let people know about God. Amen. Also, when we come together and symbol, uh, we come together because we have the same spirit. Amen. Now, we ought to, now, we can't forget that the uh, word of God said that we are to love one another. Amen. Now, when you love somebody, you want to be around them. You may love the word, but you can love the word in them. Yeah. And you just want to be around them because you're connected with the same spirit. And sometimes we gain strength by being around each other yeah. because sometimes we may say something that may strengthen you or someone may have a uh, experience that they've been through that can uplift you in the experience that you are now going through. So it's not all about the 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 meat. The meat is not important. It's just because I want to be around you. Uh, I, I like that. Thank you, sister. Oh. 
thank you. Thank you. So now we're talking about how we are to stay together and, and to uh, hold it fast. Now, there are those that fell away. Now, in this scripture, uh, in this lesson, it is telling us and warning us to not fall away from the faith. And it gives us warning and it gives us the result of if we fall away. And so it said in the 26th verse, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain no more sacrifice for sin. So notice it say willfully. If we do it willfully, which means the devil didn't make you do it. Mama didn't make you do it. You had a free will. So it say that for if we sin willfully. Now, I don't know about this question in the book. It talks about the willful sin and occasional sin. So it say explain the difference between a willful sin and an occasional sin. We know sin is sin, but... Okay, let's just kind of, someone bring me out on that. Amen. Amen. I, I like Go ahead. Go ahead. It's going, going back. back. Oh, I, oh, love, I what love what the pastor, the pastor said. He said something, something so, so profound, profound to me. To me. How, can How can you, you sin, sin willingly, willingly if you're in Christ? That means Amen. you have, That means you done fell, fell away. You done fell away. That's, that's the point here. here. I, I, I hear, hear the word fellowship. If we all have set price, we are, we are in the in body, the body. Of, of, believe, believe. I, like I like what the what sister used, used first Timothy 3, 3, 16. The thing, the thing is, is, if you look, if you at, look Jesus at Jesus teaching, teaching did, everybody did everybody grasp what he was, what he was teaching at that moment? moment? But was, was it not the not children? children? That's, That's why, why the Bible, Bible talks in Galatians, those of us who are strong, help bear the infirmities of the weak. In this context, you ask the person, how did this sin willfully? Because, because it went, went back, back to, to uh, uh, the elder, elder said, said, oh, nature uh, of thinking. They what went caused, another way. Me, to, what caused me to fellowship from the body? I want to say this. I'm going to get off the line. In the first place, the word comes. Everybody's not going to understand the word. we got to be careful with that. But we are there together to fellowship. Some of us is not where we are. The Bible says it calls some to be pastor, minister, evangelist, and whatever for a purpose. We got to stop beating, beating saints, saints up. up. If the if saints, saints show, show up in the house, house of God, at least they're in the house. house. Now, now where, where are they, they at? at? As, As I hear I somebody, somebody talk about this spirit, spirit in the, in the uh, call, call for the spirit. The spirit, the spirit, spirit is present. present. If we're in Christ, the spirit is always present. present. Now, we got to get an understanding of the, as I look at Hebrew, of the context, the narrative, what is it focused on? Why did some fall away? Because, because they, they, sometime, sometime and, and John, and John the, uh, the, uh, Jesus, let me slow down. down. Uh, 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 trying to think, think of John. John. When, when, say, when, when certain, certain teaching came, came disciples say, this is too hard for us to believe that fell away. It's the teaching. The pastor stands in pulpit every week, whether I like it or not like it, whether I can understand it or not, he's bringing the word. I don't care how he brings it. Amen. The point is where it finds me. I'm still I'm fellowship, I'm still in the house, am I not? Amen. Sometimes yes. people, people that don't, they don't go their way, way and they don't, they don't like the way, way he looked today, the way, the way he dressed and wore his tie, or where he All pronounced right. how he acted. They, 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 they just say, I ain't going to go there and no, I ain't messing, messing with him. him. What that got to do with fellowship? Mm-hmm. Amen. So, Y'all thank you. Thank you. Pray for me and my tribe. Y'all be good. Amen. When we come together, we come, we that are uh, filled with God, we come together, and our spirit meets together, one spirit. So when we are praising God together, God's presence is manifested. And so here we still have to deal with falling away, because there are those that have gotten weak, or those that have also not only gotten weak, they have willfully turned away from the faith. And that is happening today. We have to re be reminded. We can't just act like, uh, you know, it's not happening and that it can't happen to us. But we, but we, 
that are in Christ Jesus and trust that he is our keeper, we can stand fast. But it say, for if so, it shows us, it say, to him that knoweth to do good and do it not to him that sin. So like this, this scripture say, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. So those that were told the truth and refused the truth, it said that there would be punishment from God, the judge, because they knew, they were told, but they decided in the scripture to not do what God say do. So here it say that we, for we know him that have said, vengeance belong unto me. God is the one that takes control of those that have disobeyed him and have done evil. It is not us to judge, but he is the one that takes vengeance and to punish. And it say that, uh, for the Lord shall judge his people. Remember Israel, when they took their eyes off God, they fell into idolatry. So the lesson is telling us is if we have in faith, which is the just shall live by faith, and we walk by faith, and so faith without works is dead, meaning that if we say we have faith in God, we ought to be living the, living, living the new way of life that Christ has provided for us through the shedding of his blood. If we say we have faith, then we ought to be lights that's shining in the darkness. And so, and in my closing, we need to remember to hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. No matter how hard it gets, we ought to be like the, the uh, man that's in a race. He goes, he builds his body up. He builds up the muscles that are weak. He take off certain clothing so it won't hold him down. You see how the, the runners, they have very little clothing on. They don't want to be held down in the race. In Philippians 3, it says, he said, I don't consider it. He said, but this one thing, and he said, forgetting what lies behind. I'm not looking back. So when, the, when he in that race, he don't always look back because he don't have time to look back. He's pressing forward to what lies ahead, and he's pressing toward the goal, towards the prize. And I say to you, my sisters and brothers, we're pressing towards the prize, the goal, which is God in Christ Jesus. So I say on the mark, get set, go. Stand for, your, for Jesus, persevere, and don't give up. Because Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. On the mark, get set, let's go. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We pray, God, that we have the faith to persevere in this day and time. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will gird us in the word of God that we have heard on today, and, Lord, that we will take it seriously and that we will seize, O oh God, the profession that we profess, and, Lord, that we will not let go, no matter how hard it gets, oh God, no matter how, oh God, we're talked about, we're pushed aside, uh, we may feel alone, oh God, and the winds of life may blow. But God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, let us not rock. Let us not tittle. Let us stand firm in your word, O oh God. Let us, O oh God, stay focused on the prize, which is Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for attending this awesome service. Please join us via Facebook or YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joel L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again, and may God bless you.
What a mighty God we serve. Oh, angels bow before him. Heaven earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, angels bow before him. Heaven earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before that throne of grace. I'm not step before thee, thanking you once again for thy goodness and your kindness. And Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made. And we come today saying we will rejoice and be glad in it. I ask you now, Lord, as I stand before these, thy precious people, that you let me decrease, that the word of God may increase in the name of Jesus. Anoint the lips of clay that they will obey. It is my prayer that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We had a we had a wonderful Sun School lesson on this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. First lady act like she got caught up, was gonna turn it loose. And I didn't say anything. Amen. Praise. I was just back there enjoying the Sun School lesson on this morning. Amen. But we're so glad to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. How many of y'all know it's just good to be saved? Amen. It's just good to be saved. When I think about all the places I could be, I'd rather be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord. I'm excited about what God is doing, what God has done. Amen. I ask that you turn in your Bibles. I'm going to ask for some readers today. Amen. I'm going to ask that you turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter. Amen. Also, Luke, the 19th chapter. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask for some readers today. Amen. Matthews 25. Amen. Verse 14. Amen. Luke 19. Amen. Praise the Lord. Beginning at verse 12. Matthews 25. Amen. Verse 14. Amen. Matthews 25. Verse 14. And I'm going to act that you read. Amen. Praise the Lord. All the way through the 27th verse. Praise the Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country uh -huh. who called his own servants yes. and delivered unto them his goods. Yes, sir. And until one he gave mm -hmm. five talents, uh -huh. to another two, yes. and to another one, yes. to every man according, according to what his several ability. I want you to highlight in your Bible that he gave to every man according to their several ability. Ability. Read on. And straightway uh -huh. took his journey. Yes. Then he mm -hmm. that had received the five talents yes. went and traded with the same. Yes. And made them other five talents. Uh huh. And likewise, likewise, he that had received two, uh huh. He also gained mm -hmm. other two. Yes. But he that had received one, but he that received one did what? Went and digged in the earth. Digged in his backyard. And hid his Lord's money. And buried the Lord's money. Read. After a long time, uh -huh. the Lord of those servants cometh. Yes. And reckoneth with them. Mm -hmm. And so he that had received five talents. Yes. Came and bought five talents. Yes, sir. Saying, Lord. Lord. Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Uh-huh. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Five talents more. Uh-huh. His Lord said unto him. Yes. Well done. Well done. Thou good and Thou faithful good servant. Thou good and faithful servant. Yes. Thou has been faithful. Thou has been faithful. Over a few things. Read. I will make thee. I'm going to promote you. I'm going to make thee what? Ruler. Uh-huh. Over many things. Yes. Enter thou. I need you to enter thou. Into the joy of thy Lord. Read. He also that uh, had received two talents. Uh huh. Came and said. He came and gave his report. Lord. Lord. Thou deliverest. Thou delivered. Unto me two talents. Uh huh. Behold. Yes. I have gained two other talents besides yes, them. Yes. 
His Lord said unto him, mm -hmm. well done. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Yes. Thou hast been faithful. Thou hast been faithful. Over a few things. Thank the Lord. I will make thee ruler uh -huh. over many things. Yes. Enter thou, Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Read. Then he which had received one talent uh -huh. came and said. He came and gave accountability. Lord. Lord. I knew thee. I knew thee. That thou art an hard man. I knew that you were a hard man. You have a reputation. And I knew that about you. Uh-huh. Reaping where thou hast not sown. You have a tendency to reap where you have not sown. And gathering where thou hast not um, stowed. And you gather where thou have not strawed. Uh-huh. And I was afraid. And I was afraid. Can I be honest? I was timid. Read. And I went and hid thy talent. I in the went earth. and dug a hole in my backyard and buried your talent. Uh huh. Low. Low. There thou hast that is thine. Hear what you gave me. Uh huh. His Lord answered and His said. His Lord responded, yes. Uh huh. Unto him. Yes. Thou wicked. Thou wicked. And slowful. Not only was he wicked, mother, he was slowful. Servant. Uh huh. Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not. You knew my reputation that I reap where I sow not. And gather where I have not strawed. And I gather where I have not strawed. Uh-huh. Thou owest therefore. Thou oughtest therefore. To have put my money. You least could have took my money and put it where? To the exchanger. And the bank account. Uh-huh. And then. And then. At my coming. At my coming. I should have received. I should have received. My own. My own with ushery. Ushery, my own interest. If you just take what I gave you and deposit that into the savings account, it would have collected some interest. But you did not do that. Read. Take therefore. Take therefore the talent from him. Uh-huh. And give it unto and him. And give it unto him. With half ten with, talent. With half ten talent. Uh-huh. For unto everyone. For everyone. For unto everyone. That has shall be that has given, uh -huh, be given shall be given and he shall have abundance and he shall have abundance but from him but from him that have not shall that have not shall be taken shall be taken away uh -huh, even that which he had read and he cast and he cast correction and cast ye and cast ye the unprofitable servant the unprofitable servant the one that was wicked the one that was slothful that was sitting around doing nothing read into outer darkness outer darkness there shall there shall be weeping reaping and gnashing and gnashing of the teeth of the teeth amen Luke the nineteenth chapter Luke nineteen verse twelve who has that one. He said, therefore, he said, therefore, a certain nobleman, a certain nobleman went into a far country, went into a far country to receive for himself, to receive for himself a kingdom, a kingdom and to return and to return. Read. And he called his ten servants and he called his ten servants and delivered them and delivered them ten pounds, ten pounds and said unto them, I need you to do what? Occupy. I, I need come. you to occupy until I get back home. Okay. But his citizens, but his him, citizens, uh, man, the citizens, the, the neighbors, the folks in the surrounding community, they what? Hated him. They hated him. They did not like him. Uh huh. And sent a message. And sent a message after he had left. They sent a message after him saying what? We will not have this man. We will not have this man. To reign over us. So what happened? This man was going, amen, praise the Lord, into a far country to receive his kingdom, to receive a promotion. Amen. And before he left to go to this king to receive this promotion, this honorary, amen, he called ten servants to him and delivered unto them pounds and told them, I need you to get busy and occupied until I return. But the citizens did not have, did not like this guy. And so they sent word behind him that we will not have this guy reigning over us. Read. And mm -hmm. it came to pass. It came to pass. That when he was returned. That uh, when he was returned. Having received the kingdom. Having received the kingdom in spite of what the citizens felt, he still was inaugurated. Read. Then he commanded. He commanded. These servants. These servants that he gave 10 pounds to the what? To 
be called uh-huh. unto him mm-hmm. to whom he had given uh-huh. the money. Yes. That he might know how. That he might know how much every man had gained, gained by what? Trading. They trading read. Then came the pa- the first. Then came the first. Saying, uh-huh. Lord, yes. thy pound has what? gained ten pounds. Read. And he said unto him, uh-huh. well, thy good servant, mm-hmm. because thou hast been faithful. Because in a, thou hast been faithful. In a few little. In a very little. Have thy authority, authority uh-huh. over ten cities. Read. And the second came, uh-huh. saying, yes. Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. Uh-huh. And he said likewise to him, mm-hmm. be thou also over five cities. Read. And another came, uh-huh. saying, Lord, yes. behold, uh-huh. here is thy pound, yes. which I have kept thy l- laid up in a napkin. I have kept it laid up in a napkin. I put it in a drawer, my socket drawer. I put it in my sock drawer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so here I am. Read. For I feared thee. I feared thee. Because thou art an austral man. Thou art austral. You're a harsh man. You, your heart to please. Amen. Praise the Lord. Read. Thou takest up that thou layest thou down. Thou takest up that thou have not laid down. And reapest that thou didst not sow. And then y'all, you have a tendency to reap where you did not even sow a thing. Read. And he said unto him, Uh huh. Out of thine own mouth, out of thy own mouth, will I judge thee. Read. Thy wicked servant. Yes. Thou know it, knewest that I was an austere man. You knew I was a stern man. You knew, amen, praise the Lord, of my, amen, characteristic. You knew me. Not like you didn't have nothing, you didn't know anything about me. Read. Taken up that I laid not you down. You know I have a tendency to take up that I have not laid down, and I do reap what I have not sown. Read. Wherefore, Wherefore then gavest that not thou uh-huh. my money into the bank. You should at least took it to the Bank of America, Wells Fargo, song. At least could have took it to the bank. That at my, my coming, I might have required my own what? My own with ushery. Uh huh. Read. And he said unto them mm-hmm. that stood by, Yes. Take from I him. I need you to take from him the pound. Uh huh. And give it. And give it to that brother, that sister over there that did something with the pound I gave her and made 10 pounds. Read. And they said unto him, Lord, uh-huh. yes. He has 10 pounds. But he already had 10 pounds. But God didn't ask him that. Read. For I say unto you mm-hmm. that unto everyone. Which hath said shall be so given. I say unto you that everyone which hath, it shall be given. And, and from, from him that hath not, even that which he hath shall be what? Taken away from him. But those my enemies which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and what? Slay them before me. I want to talk to you today. We talked on last Sunday about occupying until he come. And the question came last Sunday. Amen. Does God occupy occupy the first place in your heart? Does God occupy the first place in your heart? Amen. I ask you, amen, praise the Lord, some crucial questions, you know, and we need to ask ourselves those same crucial questions today. Does God occupy the first place in our heart? Amen. Upward, I was asking you, amen, last Sunday, is he your creator? Is he your sustainer? Amen. Is he your source of things amen praise the lord because many are willing to serve god as long as it doesn't cost them too much is that all right many are willing to serve the lord digging hundred longs don't cost them too much time too much effort amen praise the lord they give and they find themselves giving god the crumbs are you giving god your crumbs are you giving god your leftovers amen praise the lord amen praise the lord and so today I want to talk to you today from the same passage of scripture. How is your life invested in the things of God? How is your life invested in the things of God? Do you not know these two parables talk about a king that is going to return with an expectation? 
Amen. That's what these two parables are talking about. It's talking about the king. It's talking about the king that is going to return with an expectation. Every one of us that has named the name of Christ has been entrusted. Somebody say entrusted with the gospel. Can we go to 1 Thessalonians? 1 Thessalonians. Amen. Praise the Lord. 2 and 4. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then we'll go a little bit further. Somebody get me 1 Thessalonians 2 and 4. And someone get me 1 Timothy 1 and 11, uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 20, and 2 Timothy 2 and 2. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 4. Uh huh. But as we were allowed. But as we were allowed. I like that word allowed. Amen. Because God allows every one of us from the pulpit to a back door to do something so as we were allowed uh -huh. of God to be put in trust do you not know God has allowed you and me to be put in trust with what Elder Edwards the gospel God has allowed us to be put in trust with the gospel the question you have to ask yourself what are you doing with that gospel that God has entrusted you with Amen. I love this. I love this. It's, look, look what it says. Read it again. It says what, but we as we are what? Allowed. We are allowed. You mean we are allowed. Deacon, we are allowed. We are afforded the opportunity to handle Amen. this gospel. We are allowed and afforded the opportunity to handle the word of God. Read. Even so. Even so. We speak. We speak. Not as pleasing men. Not as pleasing men. But God. But God which what? Which treeth our hearts. Which trieth, which trieth our hearts. God, God, God judges our hearts. God judges our hearts. But the thing I love what I read here this morning is that God, that we have been allowed, we have been approved, we have been entrusted with this gospel. And the oh yes, we the gospel has been invested in us. And the question God is asking us this morning is how is our life invested in the things of God? What are we doing with the things that God has invested us with? Amen. Who has First Timothy? First Timothy one and eleven. Amen. First Timothy one and eleven. According to the glorious gospel. According to the glorious gospel. Of the blessed God. Of the blessed God. Which was committed to my trust. Which was committed to my trust. God has committed to our trust. This gospel. According to Jesus Christ. And what are we doing with this investment? First Timothy six and twenty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh Timothy. Keep that which is entrusted. Keep that which is committed. Keep that which is committed. Oh Timothy. Keep that which is committed. What? To thy trust. To thy trust. Brother Edward, sister Stacy, mother Abney, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Read. Avoiding profane. Avoiding profane. And vain babbling. And vain babbling. Stop hanging around and being around all that foolish talking and all that stuff. Avoiding profane and vain babbling and opposition of science falsely so-called amen praise the lord with some professing have air concerning what faith. thank you second timothy two and two second timothy uh-huh mm -hmm. and the things that thou hast heard of and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses among many witnesses the same commit the same commit what thou to faithful men. I need to commit them to some faithful men and women. I need you the same things, the same things that the house heard of me among many witnesses. I need you to commit those things to what? Not just any kind of men. What kind of men? Elder? Faithful men. Faithful men. Uh huh. Who shall be able to teach? Who others. shall be able to teach? Others also. Also. 
it's a shame you can say umpteen years and you still can't teach. Amen. What have you done with, <laughs> Mother Abby? What have you done with what God has invested in you? Amen. Praise the Lord. I learned something. Everybody can't teach preschool. Everybody can't preach kindergarten. Everybody cannot teach first grade. But somebody can teach someone. Am I right? And here we find that God has committed, God has entrusted faithful men with the gospel. And the question comes to us this morning asking us, how is our in life invested in the things of God? What are we doing with the things that God has invested us with? The church, the body of Christ, needs a strong reminder of the weight of the scripture. I'm going to say again, the body of Christ, the church needs a strong reminder of the weight of the gospel. As I talked to El Pastor Green on this past week, and he was doing his morning devotion, and he was looking at the scripture that says, no man that put their hand to the plow and looked back as fit for the kingdom of God. And he was sharing with me how it is so easy to get to the place where him and Mother Green is at and feel it's all over. There's nothing more to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. But he said there's no retirement in God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so the body of Christ needs a strong reminder. I thought maybe when this coronavirus first started, it would have been a strong reminder. But evidently, amen. Thank you, Mother. Amen. I thought maybe this is a strong reminder where we need to be. But folks are still living as if there's no concern about Jesus coming back. As if there's no concern about the lost souls. And so the church needs a strong reminder, maybe a stronger reminder of the scriptures, the scripture and what actually is at stake. Is that all right? The Bible is preached from the pulpit less and less. Amen. The Bible is preached from the pulpit less and less. And we need to return to what is most important, the sharing of the gospel according to Jesus Christ. Paul prayed for the believers in Ephesus, amen, that they might know that God called them to do and understand the riches he had invested in them. You not realize if it had not been for the grace of God, you and I may not be sitting or standing where we are at today. It is just by the grace of God we are here. Let's be real. Some of the things we were doing, we should have been dead. Amen. But somebody prayed for us, had us on their mind, and took the time to pray for us. See, God knows, thank you, Mother. God knows what he invested in you. God knows what he has invested in me. He and take you to heaven the next day. He does not say you today and shit and take you to glory tomorrow. Amen. He calls and equips us to fulfill a certain purpose while here. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Christ taught that some of us have five talents. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some are two talent people. Some are one talent people. But whatever type of person you are, you are still talented. Is that all right? I love these two passages of scripture. I'll get to back to them. But that's why it's a mistake to draw a comparison between Matthews and Luke. And that's why I brought both of them together. Amen. Praise Lord. It's not what you have that determines your reward. I'm going to say again. It's not what you have that determines your reward, but it's what you do with what you have. Come on, Shadow. Glory to God. I'm going to say again. It's not what you have that determines your reward, but it's what you do with what you have. It's when you bury your talent, bury your gift. Because you are afraid of being talked about. Or you're afraid that you may fail. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is you get in trouble. That is when we get in trouble with God. That found in that story. The man got in trouble with God. God protects what he has invested in you. God protects what he has invested in me. And do we sometimes still disobey God? Amen. Yes, we do. Does he discipline us? Yes, he does. Does he forgive? Yes, he do. 
And your response to him can either lengthen or shorten your season. Somebody say season of discipline. Amen. But God does, uh, but, but, but God does never abandon us. But abandon us. Romans 11 and 29 let us know that the gifts and the callings are without repentance. God never regret anointing you and appointing you with the gifts and the talents that he's anointing and appointing you with. The gifts and the callings are without repentance. God do not regret what he blessed Angela with to promote the gospel. God don't regret it. God don't make no mistakes. He knew everyone's ability. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has made a great investment in you and I. Amen. Praise the Lord so that we might make a great investment in others. But who have you been investing in since God has invested the gospel in you? Can I keep talking here today? Amen. Bring others to the who have you brought? I mean, who have you brought to the saving grace of God? Who have you brought to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? Amen. Praise him. Amen. And where have you invested your time and energy? My mother used to sing a song before she went to be with the Lord. Time, time, time. Time is winding up. Do you not know that we all will be examined? By the book of life. God will examine the books. To see if we made a profit. With what he blessed us with. Amen. None of us in here today. Put money into a savings account. Or buy CDs. Or whatever. Without looking for what? A return on our what? Investment. God is looking for a return on his investment. And what is that he invested in us? Thank you, Sister Holmes, for asking that question. He invested in us the word. And what are we doing with the word that God has impregnated us with? What are we doing with the word that God has invested in, in us? Are we sharing that word? Are we sharing the gospel with anybody else? Amen. What are we doing with it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Occupy till I come means get busy. Not sitting around looking for everyone to do what everybody can do that somebody should have done and nobody end up doing. No. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so every believer will give an account of their effort. Yes, we will. From the pulpit to the back door. It is not just the pastor's responsibility to go out into the highways and hedges and compel men to come. It is not just the pastor's responsibility to knock on doors and invite people to come and get to know Jesus. Will they ever come to be your home or not? I don't care. But at least introduce Jesus to them. Who and when was the last time you introduced Jesus to somebody? Don't ask that question. I want you lying in church. Amen. When was the last time you introduced Jesus to somebody? When was the last time you invited somebody to accept the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in their life? When did you let them know that if they keep going down the path that they're in, that the wages of sin is death? You were given account of your whole life. Amen. Some of you have taken the gospel and stuck it in your stock drawer. Y'all remember, you just read it. man did what? He took and hid it in a napkin. Y'all done hid it in a sock drawer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of y'all, amen, Dick and Hunt, they have stuck it under the mattress. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And Paul let the believers know that we have been entrusted with the gospel. Amen. And not only that, amen, Elder Edwards let us know that we have been approved. God said his approval upon us, regardless of our background, regardless of what we have done, we have been approved, somebody say approved, by God. Amen. So some of us, amen, taking the story of Jesus, and stuck it in that sock drawer. Some of us are taking the story of Jesus and stuck it under the mattress. Unlike this man, he put it in, he put it in a napkin. 
And then the other man took a shovel and dug it and hid it and as he was hiding the treasure. Amen. What have we done with the investment that God has invested in us? Paul, amen, praise the Lord. Let us know that we have been entrusted with this gospel. Every believer receives the same gospel. Whether you're Billy Graham or Apostle Paul. Amen. So while King Jesus is away, God is requiring us to engage, somebody say engage, in business of promoting the God, glorious gospel of Jesus Christ while he's away. Because he is coming back. Amen. And how are you investing God has entrusted you with? Amen. Have you shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with anyone on last week? Do anyone know you saved? Do anybody know you love the Lord? Do anybody know you're a fanatic for Jesus? You sold out? Amen. Praise the Lord. Or do they look at you as a Christian? <laughs> Have you invested in the things of God? I'm always looking for an opportunity when I go out to share the gospel with somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have you been a good steward and found ways to increase that which you have been entrusted with? I'm going to say again, have you been a good steward and have found ways to increase that which you've been entrusted with? What I'm asking, have you been increasing and advancing the kingdom of God? Has your faith grown? What kind of investment return will you present to Jesus when he comes back? Amen. What kind of investment return will you present to Jesus when he comes back? Amen. The parables is here to help us. Will you produce a 100% return? A 50% return? Or a 0% return? Amen. James 5, 19 and 20. James 5. Amen. Praise the Lord. 19 and 20. And he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Amen. Brethren, if any of you err, if any of you do err from the truth, and one what? Convert him. Let him know that he which converteth what? Uh-huh. From the error of his way does what? And shall what? When was the last time you converted a sinner? And when I ask you, when was the last time you, I'm not talking about you in essence, but the God, the Christ in you. When was the last time you converted a, a sinner? That's a lot. I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking a question. Have you been investing in the things of God? Brother, if any do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that, amen, he which converted the sinner, he that brings back the sinner, he that causes the sinner to repent and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, amen, praise the Lord, shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Amen. What are the consequences of doing nothing? I'm glad you asked, Evangelist Irvin. I asked a question a while back. I asked it periodically. What is greater than God? Meaner than the devil. And people do it every day. And they keep on doing it. They're going to end up in hell for doing it. Amen. What is greater than God? Meaner than the devil. And let me ask this too. What is greater than God? Meaner than the devil. And the poor have it. Mm -hmm. The rich don't need it. And if you eat it, you will die. What is greater than God? Nothing. What is meaner than the devil? Nothing. The poor has what? Nothing. And the rich don't need nothing. I can't get nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves. <laughs> Thank you, Deacon Hunt. There are consequences for doing nothing. Amen. The Lord then commands them to what? Uh, occupy till I come. 
The word occupy means to invest with the intent of increasing or advancing the kingdom of God. When Jesus told them to occupy till it come, he was telling them to make some, they may get some return on the investment. He called his ten servants and delivered unto them ten pounds and said unto them, occupy, trade with what I'm giving you. D amen. Work with what I just put in your hand. Occupy till I come. Thank you. And that scripture, the, the but not simply to keep the bound, the, 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 the 10 pounds safe. Later it is revealed in verse 20 that one of these servants kept the pound in a napkin, in a sock drawer, under the mattress until the Lord returned. And he was rebuked severely and lost the pound in the reward. Those servants who invested their pound were committed and given greater opportunity. Can I keep talking here? Romans, the 12th chapter, amen, praise the Lord. Amen. Romans 12, verse 6. Amen. Praise the Lord. It reads as follows. And then give differing according to the grace of God. Do you not know everybody don't have the same gifts and talents? Teaches Romans 12 and 6 teaches us as saints of God that we have been entrusted with gifts to be used for the Lord. Amen. And it's having the gifts differently seen according to the grace given to us, we are to occupy until he come. We are to invest our time. We are to invest our talents. We are to invest our treasures. We are to invest the opportunities for the Lord so that God's work is advanced and can be multiplied. Mm-hmm. How long, was, how long must we occupy? I'm glad you asked, Sister Hornsby. Amen. Should we set a time limit? Should we set a date, time, and calendar year? Amen. How long should we occupy? Should we set a, terminated, a termination date for our services? Amen. Praise the Lord. Would it be proper to say, I'm going to read my Bible every day for a month, and after that, that's enough? Should we say, well, I'm going to be saved for 40 years, and after 40 years, that's enough? Amen. Oh, sure. I said we say 50 years and after that. I think I've done enough. Oh, I'm going to tie, trust God in stewardship until I got my debt paid. No. Command us to occupy until he what? Returns. Thank you. Amen. How many of you heard people say they have outgrown the ministry? I was out of town the other week. Somebody said they outgrown the ministry. Amen. Praise the Lord. But let me first say that outgrown a church does not mean that you have become more spiritual than others. Can I keep talking up in here? Because any time you outgrow God, you in trouble. I told the brother while I was out there, brother, what you mean you out? Well, you done lost your mind, brother. Amen. I believe when one says such thing, they are actually speaking more of outgrown the organization or maybe the culture or, 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 or the environment they're in, but you can never outgrow God. Uh-huh. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's like me saying that I outgrow pastoring. I'm still learning how to pastor. Thank you, Sister Harvey, for letting me, let me practice on y'all, Sister Wright. We was on tobacco road. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But as I heard First Lady teach this morning, we move from faith to faith. Amen. We continue to grow. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I said, the way I know, the way I know I have outgrown the church is when I stop doing what I have been called to do for the advancement of the kingdom of God. I can't get nobody to help me. The only way I can outgrow a ministry, outgrow God, I have to stop doing what I have been called to do. But every day I get up, I'm trying to perfect my pastorship through the study and the reading of the word. I know Sister Hornby, they can tell you, amen, Elder Edwards, when I started passing on Tobacco Road, I used to get up. I wasn't sure myself. I would come in the pulpit and say, if, God, if, I, if I wake up tomorrow, I find out God didn't come to pass, I'm going to come back and let y'all know. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you what church I'm going to, but I'm going to stay safe. Be a backslap is never an option. I can't get nobody to help me. Amen. Praise the Lord. But here I am, 30 years later, I'm still standing. I can't get nobody to help me. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can outgrow. You can outgrow. You can outgrow an organization. You can outgrow a, a, a cultural church, but you can't outgrow God. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm still trying to perfect my pastorship. I know I got some more room to grow. Anybody here got some more room to grow? Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, amen. Uh huh. So, the way I know I outgrown the church is when I stop doing what I've been called to do. Amen. By the Lord. And have become indifferent. Somebody say indifferent. Amen. I have become indifferent towards what is going on around me. This could mean that there are no more challenges. And I could, and it could mean that I have stopped growing in my potentiality. Because what did I learn? Growing in God is always challenging. Somebody is going to always challenge you. I shared with you all the other night in pastor your teaching. I was challenged. Amen. Sister Angela, I had somebody that discriminated against me, that did me wrong. Now they want me to represent them for some VA amen, compensation. I, 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 I would have shook my head no too. <laughs> <laughs> but ah ah ah! I said, "Oh God!" I said, "Deacon Hunt." I said, "Lord, you sure got a good sense of humor." Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I know that when they reached out to me, they didn't expect my response. Amen. Not what they put me through. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Oh yes, you gonna get tested. I still have to show what the love of God. I can't render evil for evil. I got the heat coals of fire. What? Oh, yes, mother, mother, mother. Green said, I know he had a burner right now. His head is burning. See, I pray, see, I, see what I done? I pay close attention to the vision of the ministry. When there's no vision, the people what? Thank you. So I pay close attention to the vision. If the vision of the ministry and its practice does not line up with God's word, amen, praise the Lord, or growing closer together in time, then my heart is going to become restless. But when the vision is God-centered, when I got on the pastor cook, we was in a three-bedroom house. Was a two-bedroom house? We started a church in a three-bedroom house. Amen. We had church in the living room. I can't get nobody to help me. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I believe the vision God gave him. And I said, well, Pastor, I know my ministry at my pulpit is on the street corner. I can't get nobody to help me. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just knew my job was to get them in the church. If I get them in the church, then God will do everything else we had to do through Pastor Cook. Amen. So what are you doing to get people in the church? Uh-oh, I messed up then. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I just knew my responsibility was to feel. God said, I want my house filled. So I was doing all I can to get his house filled. Amen, amen. Going out Saturdays from what time we went? 12 to 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And then we'll go out again from midnight to 1 o'clock. Amen. Witnessing. I was walking in the clubs. Amen. Pray on 41A there in Clarksville, Tennessee. Preaching the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. I had a young man say, now anytime you, God sends somebody up in the club to, amen, to witness, I know I got to get sick. I can't get my help. I had to work. I had to, I had to use what was invested in me. What are you doing with what has been invested? In you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so it's simply, I simply evaluate myself. I have never told a church, I never told a pastor, I have outgrown the ministry. I simply evaluate myself and I find that most times it is time for me to challenge myself. So I don't become what? Complacent. Thank you, Mother. Amen. See, we can never outgrow the church. Why? The church is the ecclesia in the Greek word. The church is the called out assembly. Amen. Praise. You can never go. You can never outgrow the called out assembly. You can never outgrow the ecclesia. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I told the young man, you need, you need to, you need to go back and sit down and think what you just told me. Amen. Talk about leaving the church. I'm out. Brother, the devil is a lie. Amen. Pray. Last time you had a witness somewhere, and he don't even witness. But you outgrown the ministry. You out? No, 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 no. You have got complacent. I can't get anybody to help me. See, it's very comfortable to come in here and teach. I can't get anybody to help me. It's so comfortable to come behind a lecture and teach. You challenge in here. You get challenged out there. Can't keep talking. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, Amen. I told him you can. You can't outgrow. You can't outgrow God. You can outgrow an organization, a church, but you can't outgrow God. But I found out he was not doing no evangelism. He was not doing no ministry. But you had outgrown the ministry. I found out there's always room for in ministry. Some are called to be evangelists. Some are called to be prophets, apostle. 
But we all, you can never outgrow. Thank God the brother stayed. I can't get nobody to help me. But how long must we occupy? When we look at Luke 14 and 23, the Lord told them to occupy how? By going out into the highways and hedges and compelling men to come, what? That my house may be filled. So how long must we occupy? Until the house is full. I can't get nobody to help me. <laughs> it's, oh, oh, I heard your sister right. So what happened when the house gets filled? You build a new house. I can't get nobody. <laughs> Occupy till he comes. And praise the Lord. John admonishes in 2 John and in, 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 in 2 John 8. Look to yourself. Amen. 2 John 8. Amen. He said, Look to yourself. Examine yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, Look to yourself that we lose not those things which was walked. Amen. But that we receive a re full reward. He said, look, that we lose not those things which was, amen, that was, amen, that we were impregnated. And he said, look to yourself. Amen. Examine yourself. Don't become complacent so you don't lose those things that was wrought in your life, that was worked in your life. Amen. Too many saints start out well in this journey, but for some reason or another, they become disenchanted. They become disenfranchised. They become discouraged and deterred in this service. John remind us that the only way to receive a full reward when we meet the Lord is to continue all the way to the end. See, we may not be physically able. See, right now, I've learned from, I'm learning from the late John Wesley Loggins, the evangelist Loggins, that New Year's revivalist. I'm learning from him. I got to do what I can do now that when I get to age, I may not be able to do those things. See, Mother Abney can't do the things she used to do when she was 20. But she's able to offer what, what? Women some godly wisdom. How to be chaste keepers of the home. I can't get nobody to help me. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, amen. But, she, but physically she may not be able to serve as she was in her younger years. So I may, I'm looking at now, I'm what? 61, thank you. I'm 61 years old. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do when I'm 85. I, I know I got 60 more years to go, Angela. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, but I'm looking at the fact I may not be physically able to do what I'm doing now when I get 120. So I got to do what I can now, Deacon Hunt. And you got to understand, we may be serving the same way in ministry throughout our, our entire life. Is that all right? I cannot run no nine minute two mile run. <laughs> When I retired, I was running 13 minutes. Now, I don't know if I want to run no minutes now. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So physically, we may not be able to serve in the same way, the same capacity in ministry throughout our life, but we must never have the attitude of retiring from the Lord's work. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, I don't retire. I don't. Re I may shift. I can't get nobody to help me. Anybody looking for a shift? I may shift, but I don't retire from the Lord's work. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we find out. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's like they was trying to get Pastor Green to to, to pastor another church down there in Florida. I said, brother, don't let those folks push you out there. Amen. The same one said, you can make it. Hey, uh, 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 I said the same one that's saying we can make it. After a while, I'm gonna say you can make it. <laughs> you can be by yourself. I said, don't watch that. I said, don't let them push you out there. Talk to mother. I don't think mother's ready for this again. That was a season you pastor. Enjoy that. I said, because technically you are a pastor according to Jeremiah. You are a pastor without walls. I can't get nobody to help me. Amen. And he's so glad I shared that with him. You got to be careful because folks will push you out there. You be out there by yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so I let them know, amen. And I tell people even today, God will have to have a good sense of humor to call me the pastor in my late 60s. He have to have. Because <laughs> pastoring is stressful. You know, dealing with our people. <laughs> Don't be shaking your head on me, sister. On me. Dealing with us, sister. we can we can put stress we can put stress on people, amen. So I say all the time, God will have to have a good sense of humor to call me the pastor in my late sixties. And I tried to tell my friend that before he put this pastor in position. Now that pastor had a stroke and don't even want to live no more. No, mm -mm. I, I, he said I call the young because they're what strong. 
They are vibrant. They can handle it. But I call the old why because they know the way. They have the wisdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I say, I tell you all the time, God will have to have a good sense of humor to call me a pastor in my late 60s, Deacon Hunter. I'm going to be honest with you. And some just pastor because they just want the title of pastor. Amen. Praise God. Not considering they that desire the office of a bishop, a pastor, or overseer, a supervisor, desire good work. But it's work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we have to pray. We have to pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we must never have out of time from the Lord's work. As long as God leave us here, he has a plan for us Amen. some way, shape, or form for his glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. If we're not careful, we will succumb to the notion that it's too hard. It's harder now in 2020 than it was in 2021. The Bible says the way of the transgression is hard. Living with God has never been hard for me. Amen. Living for God has never been hard for me. Living saved has never been hard for me. Staying saved. Amen. The devil do try us. Is that all right? I, you know, we can't get a point to that, say, I've done my part. Let someone else get involved. We are in this thing what? Thank you. The devil would like us to believe that our labor is in vain and it won't matter if we take our hand off the plow. But Luke 9 and 62 let us know, having put no man that put his hand to the plow and look back is fit, suitable, or even qualified. Thank you, Angela, for the kingdom of God. Put your hand to the plow is a proverbial expression that's taking new business. Now, I was talking to Elder Edwards on last week, and, you know, I was asked, I was, I, I sometimes I'd be meditating, and I, I was asking, I was telling him, if somebody was to ask me to quantify him, how would I characterize uh, Elder Edwards, I would, say, I would say he's a proverbial preacher. That brother, you so many problems, say, man, praise the Lord. I don't even know where you get them from, but I be trying to remember them sometimes when I'm out of town. Amen. But, amen. He so, but if you listen to him sometimes, some of the things he says is proverbial. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, amen. And here, the, 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 um, the Luke 9 and 6, 62 is a proverbial expression that signifies undertaking a new business. No man that undertakes a new business, no man that put his hand to the plow and looked back is fit, suitable, or qualified for the kingdom of God. In this case, putting our hands to the plow means that we have decided to follow Jesus. We have decided that we're going to commit our lives to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and get busy in the fears and undertaking of the things of the kingdom of God. For a plowman must, a, man, a plowman, a man, to be successful in his work, he must concentrate on the job at hand. Amen. He knows that the only way is forward and not being distracted by the things that he left behind. Can I keep talking here? We are commanded to bear much fruit. When we, are keep, when we keep looking back, we won't be able to plow straight roads. We keep looking back, we won't be able to plow our field properly. And because, amen, and because of that, we will not have a plentiful harvest. Is that all right? Amen. God called us out of this world. And once you respond to that call, we must never try to go back to the world. Amen. You cannot have one foot in the church and then one foot in the world. Uh-uh. However, because of many pleasures this world has to offer, the lust of the flesh, I know, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, we tend to look back and become regretful in our calling. There is not one day I ever regretted God called me. Mm -mm. I can remember when I called Pastor Green. Amen. Praise the Lord. want to know why all this stuff is going wrong in my life. I just got saved. Before I got saved, it looked like everything I touched turned to gold. Now I get saved, it looked like everything I touched falls apart. I won't know. What, but I never, not one time, did I ever regret being saved. I told the devil 40 years ago, Mother, that if he could convince me I never got saved, if he could convince me I never was an alcoholic, a drug user, a drug abuser, I would come back out there. But he me, I, cause I know who I used to be. I know what I once did. Amen. And the, the uh uh, I told the devil he could ever convince me I never got saved. I'd be back out there, going on forty one years, Deacon Hunt. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what happens? 
ourselves. Amen. We are preventing ourselves. So what happens we, when, when this happens? We are preventing ourselves from bearing much fruit. When we keep looking back with regret. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are preventing ourselves from bearing. God calls us to his church. We are expected to give him our whole heart. No, uh -uh, no reservation. Amen. I didn't come to God. Now, I did tell you all this when I got saved. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if God was real or not. And so when Pastor Green opened up the invitation, my mentality at that time, okay, what do I have to lose? If it works, I get saved. If not, business as usual. Because I didn't know if God could save me. I didn't know who, if God was real or not. But when that transformation took place, I knew I once was lost. And now I was found. I knew I was blind, but now I could see. Amen. Praise him. So we are called to love God with our whole heart, mind, and soul. Looking back prevents us from doing this. Amen. So worst of all, we might even let go of the plow and go back to our own sinful nature. I don't want to do that. Amen. A man or a woman of God who did not finish the job God has given him will not be fit, suitable, or qualified for the kingdom of God. And how can God entrust the rulership, amen, in his kingdom if we don't even want to take part in what he called us to do? Can I keep talking here? So God has given you and I a job, sister, right? Jesus began his story in verse 12. Can we go back to Luke 19? Jesus began his story in verse 12. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And here it says, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive his kingdom, himself a kingdom, into return. So a certain nobleman went to a far country to receive himself in return. And so he called his ten servants and delivered to them ten pounds and said to them, take care of my business while I'm gone. Do my business while I'm gone. And he gave and he gave them ten pounds. He told them to occupy until I come. Other words, I need you to do business as if I was still here. Amen. Is that all right? And as I compare Matthews twenty five and Luke nineteen together, they teach us that we all <coughs> have been given different spiritual gifts, abilities. Is that all right? <coughs> But in this parable, that which is given to each servant is equal. One pound. He called us ten servants and delivered unto them what? Ten pounds. He called ten servants and delivered unto them what? Ten pounds. They all had equal share. The comparison in the two parables help us to understand that although we have different gifts and abilities, there are some things that we have, amen, all been given equally by God. What has God given all of us equally? I'm glad you asked, Elder Edwards. That's time. God has given all of us equally time. That is time. I'm not talking about the length of life. Is that all right? Amen. Because you know, I'm a little well into the 90s, beyond, but others die relatively young. But each of us has been given a certain amount of time, 24 hours. It is what we do with the time that God has given us that matters. I will, when I was looking at the time, when I thought about that, I thought about our late brother Levi <coughs> in his young years here on earth and what impact he made, amen, as young as he was. Over 200 something people show up to his home going. What an impact. So that's why I said this, amen. I'm, when I talk about the, what we do at the time, I'm not talking about our longevity, how long we live, but what we do with the amount of time that God has given us. Is that all right? We all have the same job to live for Christ and to invest in what Christ has made in us. Is that all right? The parable of pounds is in a workplace environment of high finances. A rich man and soon to be a powerful to extend on an extended trip to be crowned king. Look what it says. A certain old man went to the far country to receive himself a kingdom. He was going to be crowned king. And most of the people, look what it says in the 14th verse, and his citizens hating him. Most of his people hating him and sent word ahead that they are opposing the crowning. They are, they are opposing the inauguration. They are opposing the installation of him becoming queen, king. And so Luke 19 and 14 says, amen, they hated him and sent a message out saying, we will not have this man reign over us. And that's what people are saying today. I'm not having Jesus reign over me. That's what the parable is talking about. 
I am not going to have a Lord Je Savior Jesus Christ reigning over me, tell me what I can and cannot do. I'm not going to do it. So in his absence, he assigns three of his servants to invest his money. Two of them take the risk of investing the math. They earn handsome return. A third son was afraid to take the risk. They would put the money in a napkin, in a sock drawer, under the mattress, and, and he earned no return. When the man returns, he has become king of the whole territory. And so God is going to hold you and I accountable. Is that all right? Amen. Second Peter 2 and 21, for it has been for them not known the way of righteousness, then as they are known it to turn from the holy commandment to the God is going to, it's been better for me not to know what God expected of me. Before I put my hand to the plow, knowing what it costs, because before a man builds a house, he got to first sit down and do what? Count the cost to see if he has sufficiency to complete the building process. So in, in, in 2 Peter 2 and 21, it said, hey, it had been better for me not to have known the way of right. It had been better for me not to have known what God required of me. Come on to preach up here, somebody. Then for me to know what God requires of me and don't do it. Amen. You know, you would have been better off not to have started with Jesus. That's what it's saying. You have been better off not even starting out with Jesus than to give your life to the Lord and then turn back. In other words, God said this is repudiating. Amen. This, amen. In other words, you're denying the salvation experience. And what he does, look, 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 look further that verse, further down the verse. He compares us to a dog. A dog that vomits and then goes back and eats his own vomit. When you, oh God, by Shando, hallelujah, when you put your hand to the plow and then look back, God is comparing you to a dog that vomits and then goes back and eats his own vomit. That is, that is just nasty. That is repudiating. Thank you, First Lady. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, but after some time, the nobleman did return, and, but now he comes back as king. And in the parable, when the king returned, he required a personal accountability, accounting for each of his servants. We are living in a day and time. We are living today. You do not know where we're living at. We are living between the 13th verse and the 15th verse. Jesus has gone away to prepare a place for us, and he's going to return. And he told us to occupy until he comes. So we're believing, we, we are right now, in essence, living between the 13th verse and the 15th verse. When he, when he delivered unto them 10 pounds, he's gone. Amen. And he's coming back again. Is that all right? Does that make sense to you? Amen. Praise the Lord. And so uh, when, our master in, it, it, when our master is absent, but he will return the promise. The problem is, y'all know the saying, when the cat's away, the mice is playing. Don't work with God. God is omniscient. I'm not present. He sees everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he's keeping a what? Record. According to Revelation, the books is going to be open. Ah, uh, yeah. He's keeping a record. He's keeping a record. Who have you, imp who life have you impacted since you've been saved? He's keeping a record. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so verse 15 says, and so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded his servants to the money to be called to him that he might know how much every man had gained by trading in the same way you and I would give account to the king of kings and lords of lords on how well he managed with the resources that he has given us how well did we manage the opportunities that he gave to us the time that he gave to us the Bible records two great judgments, the great white throne judgment in Revelation 20 and the judgment seat of Christ in 2 Corinthians 5. The great white judgment, as I, as I taught before in Revelation 20, is where those whose names are not found written in the book of life and are cast into the lake of fire. But this judgment is not the saints, but those who reject the Christ that refused to occupy till he come, that did nothing for the advance of the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what, that's, that's what that judgment's for. 
Is that all right? But the judgment according to 2 Corinthians 5 is entirely different. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, for we must all appear before what? The judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive what? The things done in his body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. This, that is a direct record. That is when the master, the, devil, the king is coming back and he don't want accountability of the talents, the gifts, and the things he has blessed us with. What have we done with it? Is that all right? Amen. Praise the German is called the German seed of Christ. In other words, uh, in another translation, they call it the Bema because it was a raised platform for which prizes was awarded to the athletes back in the Roman century. Amen. Praise the Lord who had completed it, competed in competition. For the German seed of Christ then is not for the punishment of unbelievers, but for the passing out the rewards to who? The faithful. He rewarded two servants who made money for him, promoting them to higher positions of their own. Jesus tells this people immediately before going to Jerusalem. He's going to be crowned king. Blessed is the king who comes what? In the name of the Lord. You'll find that in Luke 19 and 38. But soon it's rejected by his people. This identifies Jesus with the nobleman in the parable. And the crowd shouted what? Crucify him. Isn't that what they told him in, 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 in Luke 19? He is not going to reign over us. Crucify him. Luke 23 and 21, with the people in peril who oppose the new man in moderation. Uh -huh. But this we know that the people have profoundly mistrusted to be king, except for the two servants who were diligently in his absence. Uh -huh. The parable in this context warned us that we must decide if Jesus is indeed God's appointed king prepared to abide and, and receive the consequences of our decisions either to serve him or to what oppose him is that all right the parable makes it clear that the saints of god's kingdom are responsible to work towards god's goals and god's purposes and his alone uh-huh in this parable the king tells his servants directly what he expects them to do namely to invest his money this specific calling or commands make it clear that preaching, healing, evangelism are not only things God calls people to do. Amen. Of course, not everyone in God's kingdom is called to be a preacher. Everybody in God's kingdom is not called to be an investor either. In this parable, only three other countries are called to be investors. Did y'all notice that? Only three people out of the whole country. Amen. The point is that acknowledging Jesus as king requires working towards his purpose in whatever field you are in. You look at it in the military, the military has different jobs. We call it MOSs, military occupational skills. They got various ones, but everyone had to be what? A student, what they were trained to do. As it is in the natural, it's the same thing in the spiritual. Everybody within the body of Christ, we, are, we all know we have the ultimate responsibility, and that is to promote the gospel. That is to spread the gospel. Is that all right? But there are others have been called evangelism. Some have been called prophets. Some have been called pastors. Amen. But we all have a responsibility to what? Fill the house of God. Is that all right? Seen in this light, the people suggest that if we choose to accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we must accept to lead risky lives. How many y'all know living for Jesus is risky? Amen. Uh huh. Matter of fact, 2 Timothy 3 and 12 says, They that live godly in Christ Jesus shall what? Suffer persecution. You, can't, you, you, cannot, under, you, I, I, you cannot underestimate preaching this gospel is going to make folks upset. They're going to want to kill you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You ask Brother Trawick. Amen. Ask Brother Aaron that came. They'll tell you, it was a be not folks them, told them they're going to kill me. I was preaching. I was preaching. They, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what group they were. Amen. Praise the Lord. But they told, they told Trey, because then, you tell, you tell, uh, uh, I wasn't pastor at the time, Minister Newsom, if we see him downtown, we're going to kill him. Amen. And these brothers scared for me. I said, tell the devil I'll be there tomorrow. I ain't going nowhere. Amen. Uh-uh. No, no. Let them know. I'm not, I'm not changing. Amen. My program. I've been called to preach. Amen. Praise the Lord. And they put word out that they were going to kill me. I realized one thing. The devil cannot do nothing to me that God don't allow. I had another one threaten to come back to Germany and kill me. I said, I'll be here waiting for you. I'm not going nowhere. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. I realize preaching this gospel is going to make some enemies. But that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for it. But look, the Bible even let us know in Luke 17, 1 through 4, that a physicist is going to come. It said it is impossible, but a physicist is going to come. But these are woe unto them from who they come through. It, hard trials are going to come. Tribulation is going to come. They are bound to come. But too bad for whoever brings them on. It's better for them to tie a millstone around their neck and jump in the river than mess with God's little children. I keep talking up in here. Anyone who wants to live out their faith in God is in for a lot of trouble. Y'all know some of y'all family members can't stand you all. Amen. She ain't saved. That's the first they do. They attack your salvation. He ain't saved. Amen. That's okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to keep preaching anyway. Amen. The servant who invested the master's money faced the risk of being attacked by those around them who rejected the master's authority. Amen. I remember my wife and I go on the street and witness. We were threatened by pimps and prostitutes. Not prostitutes. We were threatened by pimps and drug dealers. Amen. Praise but we kept going back out there the same night. The same, the same day, the same night. Juan told us, if y'all back out here next Saturday, I'm going to kill you. I said, be here same time, same channel. Don't you be late. And he was a no-show. I can't get nobody to help me. You got to understand, doing what God has called to do is risky business. Everybody's not going to receive it. Everybody's not going to be happy. Nobody want Angela to tell them they need to be saved. They pray in church. Amen. They go for around, slap Angela. Amen. <laughs> they don't want to know the truth, but we have to tell the truth. We cannot be afraid. What shall a prophet man be gain the whole world? And lose his soul. And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Y'all know we go around talking about sudden death, sudden glory, but we don't really mean it. Amen. But I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I made up my mind. For God I live. For God I die. Amen. And so even their success exposed them to risk. Now that you have tasted success and have been promoted, the problem is now when folks get promotion in the church, they get big headed. They get high-minded. They think they're better than everybody else. But the Bible says in Romans 11 and 20, don't you be high-minded. Amen. In 1 Timothy 6 and 17, not to be high-minded. Don't forget where you came from. For some reason, we forget where we come from. I don't forget where I came from. I know I wasn't supposed to be here. I know I wasn't supposed to be alive today. Razor blade put to my neck, a gun pulled on me twice. In my lifetime, I know I wasn't supposed to be here, but for the grace of God, I'm still here. Neither failure nor success is safe in this parable. And now today, that's in Texas, neither failure or success is safe. They did not like them. They did not like the master. It is, it, 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 you know, it is tempting, Sister Holmes, be the duck for cover. It is tempting to shirk our responsibility and pass it on and search for a safe way of accommodating to the system of waiting for things to get a little bit better. Amen. Praise the Lord. But ducking for cover is one of our is one of is, is the one action Jesus condemns in this parable. Ducking for cover. Amen. The servant who tries to avoid risk is singled out as being unfaithful, being slothful, being wicked. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are not told. We are not told what would have happened if the other two had lost on their on their investment. But the implication in this is that all investment made in faithful service to God are pleasing to God. Is that all right? So Matthew 16 to 25 put it this way. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. He punishes the servant who kept the money in the napkin. He punished the servant that hid the treasure. He punished the servant for being unproductive. So if God punished them for being unproductive, what will God do with us if we not be productive in the advancement of the kingdom of God? Then he commands that all be killed. Look what he did. Everyone that did not want to be, he said, kill him. 
Amen. Look what he said there. He said, kill him. Go to go to go back there. But those who made enemy, those, but those, but those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. You didn't want me to be your Lord and Savior? Okay. Amen. But we say he's graceful. He's merciful. Yes, he is. But there's come a day of reckoning. And so he punished them. Our relationship to God will be revealed by what we do or don't do. I'm going to say it again. Our relationship with God will be revealed by what we do or don't do. Is that all right? Our relationship there are three attributes, and I'm about to close. There are three attributes toward the king that is exemplified in this scripture here. The first attribute is there were those who did not want him to be king. Who don't want the Lord to be king of your life? There are those who did not want him to be king, verse 14, verse 27. But his citizens hated him. And sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man reign over us. But the opposition failed. Do you not know the opposition failed? Jesus said, you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up again. The opposition failed. Amen. And the opposition is going to fail again. We will not have this man reign over us. The man did become king in the far country, returned to rule. And so we're all so we'll so and so we're all opposition to the king of kings will fail. After no man, Jesus went into the far country to receive a kingdom. After he rose from the grave, he ascended to heaven, and he sat down on the right hand of Matthew. And he will find that in Hebrews 1 and 3. And there he was declared to be the king by the Father. The Apostle Paul declares in, Rome, in Philippians, amen, 2, 9. And that God also had highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, what? Every knee shall come, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Is that all right? So you can confess now, or you can confess later, but the bottom line, you will confess. Is that all right? Amen. And so one day he's coming again, according to verse 27, reveals the fate of the enemies of the king. And now about these enemies of mine, we don't want me, that, that, that didn't want me to be their king, bring them to me and execute them right here on the spot. Amen. Our king came once as the lamb of God, but he's coming again as the king of glory. Is that all right, first lady? Secondly, there was those that were that who served him gladly, verses 16 through 19. Verse 16 tells us that then came the first saying, Master, your pound earned 10 more pounds. This faithful servant increased that which was given him. Have you increased what, what God has given you? Have you enlarged your territory? We asking God to enlarge our territory. No, we enlarge our territory by, what? by sowing. By planting and watering, we enlarge the territory. The master responds in this verse 17, said, well done, thy good servant. Because you were faith over very little, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you governor over 10 cities. I'm going to make you, I'm going to have, you're going to have authority over 10 cities. Well done. The master responds, well done. I would imagine the modern equipment would be say, that was a great job. You did a good job. Amen. The second servant report is, is found in verse 18. Master, you gave me a pound, I gained I gain five pounds. He said, I'm going to place you over five cities as well. Amen. The second servant gave his report. He gave accountability, and he got an increase of 500%. Amen. But the third, the third, the third are those who refuse to use what had been given them. Are you one of those that refuse to use what God has given you, the opportunity, the time, the talent, the gift? Amen. The third servant had, has a completely different story as revealed in verse 20. Then another came saying, Master, here's your pound, which I kept in my handkerchief. I kept it in my napkin. I put it in my sock drawer. I hid it under the mattress. Amen. For I fear you because you are a stern man. You collect what you didn't deposit. You reap what you did not sow. The master obviously expected the servant to take his word literally and seriously, which the servant did not take seriously. And when we don't do what God required of us, we are not taking what God tells us seriously. Is that all right? 
The, ser the third servant seems to think he has done a good thing by simply retaining that which was entrusted to him. But in verse 22 reveals that it's not how the Lord saw. That's not how the king looked at it. Out of his own mouth, I will judge you. That's what he said. Out of, my, out of your own mouth, I'm going to judge you by what came out of your mouth. Look at verse 22. Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thy wicked servant. Amen. Praise the Lord. You knew I was a stern man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. So it's not like you didn't know me. You knew. Why then did you not put my money in the bank that at my coming I might have collected some interest? The master also took the word of the servant sir, seriously and judged him according to what he said. And in effect, Jesus said, I will judge you by your own words. God going to judge it by our own words. How many of y'all didn't tell the Lord you was tired? Don't raise your hand up in here. Amen. I reminded the scripture says the fox have holes and the birds of the ears have nests, but the son of man don't even have an address. Don't have nowhere to lay his head. I would judge you by your own words. His own words proved him hypocritical. His excuses made no sense. The man told the master that he feared him because he was a hard man, but the master refused to accept his explanation. God is going to refuse our explanation. Amen. For if the servant really feared God, if he really feared the master, he would have made an effort to produce a profit for him, which he did not do. He did not even go so far as to put the money in the bank to collect some interest. Done that. That didn't require too much. Amen. And as it goes, the master returned, and the servant was fearful and disobedient. All of us are men, no men and women who tells us that they are following Jesus Christ. All of us know somebody that said they're born again, they've been saved, they're Christians. We know that they are, and we know that they, like each of us, are given equal opportunity to make an investment in the kingdom of God. But because they have distorted the view of the king, some of us have distorted the view of what it is to be saved, what it is that God is requiring of us, we have distorted it. We have watered it down. We have made it as if it's man-made. What the Lord required of them, they have been disobedient and have hidden that which was given them, and they are living wasted lives. If you think that God is kind of hateful, tearing or something like that, think again. God has given all the opportunity. That's why he gives us these parables. God has given us all the opportunity to make full use of what he's given us. Is that all right? So the man, he lost what he would not use. He lost what he would not use. He refused to use the gift that his Lord had entrusted him. And what happened? He lost it. Amen. It was taken from him. My friend, why shouldn't our Lord take away the gifts he has entrusted to believers who would not use them for his glory? The only reason why God don't, because they contradict the scriptures. The gifts and the callings are without what? Repentance. Thank you. What he had was given to another. It's very interesting that those who were standing by protested a pound being given to this one who already had 10. But think about it. This shows great wisdom. He ordered that this pound be given to the one who already been proven himself trustworthy. He had already proven himself to be faithful and industrious with the gift he had given. Was not the no man wise to entrust him with more? Amen. So as I close, if you will not use your gift for the Lord's glory, God may well use someone else. Amen. Because the ministry is not going to lack because you sitting on your seat or do nothing. Is that all right? I don't know about you, but I don't want someone else to be getting my blessings. I don't know about you. I need all the blessings I can get. Amen. So God has invested, amen, God has invested every believer with gifts, talents, and resources to serve him, but many do not use them. Many make excuses. We got Moses in the, ch in the church. I can't speak. I got a speech impediment. I don't know what to say. I learned all I got to do is open my mouth and God will speak for me. This fellow had his reasons for not using his gift. And he talked to those believers who 
do nothing for God, they got reasons to. Amen. It's those children that God gave me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Occupy till I come. Tend to my business until I return. God is going to hold us accountable and responsible for what we do with what he has entrusted us with. This includes everything. I'm going to say again, this includes everything from our finances, from our possessions, but most importantly, ourselves. Amen. What I do with the ability, the gift God has given me, what I do with the lips, the hands, the feet that God has given me, the advance, the kingdom of God, I have to get accountability for. Right. The ruin of those who reject the word of God we found in verse 14 and 27. These are severe questions. Those who reject the Lord Jesus Christ will be judged. They will be condemned to utter destruction. Those who believe they can play games with God are sadly mistaken. So Jesus said in Mark 1 and 15, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So what was it that made the Lord's enemies? They rejected his rule over their life. And when we disobey God, go against the, 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 the word of God, we are rejecting his rule over us. You may be here this morning. You may be viewed by way of Facebook and YouTube. Thank you all for inviting us into your house again. And you may, amen, and I have done that. Your sins is a rejection of God. And your sins, a rejection of God's rule in your life. The Bible said that we all have sinned from the pulpit to the back door. We all have come short of his glory. But the thing is, we don't have to keep on sinning. We do not have to keep on sinning. The wages of sin is death. Is that all right? Those out for his mercy to them. Those who receive him as the Lord and Savior, those who gladly have him to rule over them, those who are saved, their sins have been washed away. Their sins have been cleansed. Their sins have been forgiven, and they shall forever be with the Lord. Is that all right? So are you faithfully serving the Lord? Are you faithfully serving the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord? There is a reward for your faithful service. The reward will be granted not according to whether you have done more than the other. We get in church and try to have these competition. Amen. But it's not about that. But whether you did what you were required to do and should have done when the Lord had given you the opportunity. Amen. Why go on rebelling against the Lord? You got lost friends. There is forgiveness for your sins, cleansing for the blood of Christ. Judgment day is real. Amen. Judgment day is real. And when you bend the knees of Jesus Christ today, will you bend the knees of Jesus Christ confessing and forsaking your sins and calling upon him? The Bible declares that whosoever shall call upon him shall be saved. So brothers and sisters, at afternoon, amen. Occupy is to fully influence every aspect of society as we know it spiritually, socially, and economically. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word on this morning, on this afternoon, asking us how are we investing our life, the things of God. And God, your word came for us to turn the spotlight on ourselves and ask ourselves, are we occupying, are we finding ourselves busy in the things of God? Lord, I pray now for my brothers and my sisters that have found themselves on the sideline not doing what they have been commissioned to do. I pray now that through this word that was spoken on today that they will repent and get it right with you. Because we all want to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And so I'm asking now that you bless my brothers and my sisters, them that are viewing by way of Facebook and you two that are not saved. I pray this prayer with them, that they ask you for forgiveness, that they ask you to come into their heart, come into their life. And Lord, I'm asking that you transcend their mind 
and transform their heart like you did with me 40 years ago. Forgive them of their sins. Forgive them of their transgressions in the name of Jesus. And God, I'm asking to receive them into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all God's people say amen in amen. Thank you for attending this awesome service. Please join us via Facebook or YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again, and may God bless you. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise in the house.